Welcome to the WGLEU. We are into match week eight. We are flying through this season. And in case that's not enough for you, we have four days of action up ahead. And it all starts now, of course. And I'm joined by my beautiful, beautiful team of commentators and our social media guru, of course. Ollie, let's start with you. How are you feeling today? We've got a lot of games to get through this week, but we're starting with some good ones. Exactly. Monday to Thursday, we're back to back. Well, tanks action. And of course, yeah, fantastic first game coming up. Uh, Utopia versus Oops, of course, go into that a bit later. But yeah. yeah, it's going to be a super good week. I think by Thursday, we'll have a good idea of exactly how and who is going to be going to the finals. Yeah, there's a lot of questions around that, which we will be really delving our teeth into later into this show. But of course, Melly as well, you've got a long week coming up ahead of you. You've got oh, a lot of yes. Twitch chat to look after as well. And Facebook, Twitter, there's a lot going on. And Are you I'm excited really looking for it? forward to it. <laughs> yes, it's going to be great. I mean, four days in a row of the finest tank action there is in Europe. The greatest And Twitch teams. chat, the finest Twitch chat. As and well, of it is, it is. The finest Twitch chat and the finest mods and people. Thank you for tuning in. I think it's going to be a good match day, not I if not a week. I, I think so. I think we're going to hold high hopes for this week. We have some insanely good action, if anything, to go by was highlighted by last week. And speaking of last week, let's take a little look back and see exactly what happened. Good evening, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome to the WGL EU Season 2 for 2015. Killer Pit knows that crossing that street means he has to at least fire. Tend to think they've got Breakneck surrounded, but look at the cover that the Wombats have on that little corner. This is going to give Breakneck the freedom to take a shot towards Malin there. Just pokes his gun through the little break in the rubble. And Penta have to go for something now as well. They're down by about 3k hit points. They want Breakneck at least, but they're going to pay for it with the round. But the Dead Zone takes a fair bit of damage himself, and he wants to hunt down that Bat Chat. But Carix is going to be standing in his way. They're going to be more than happy to go through him as well. A lot of damage from these Bat Chats. They managed to at least get their clips out. And Carix may well fall here from this shot. If it's HG, he does. New Multi Show picks up two kills there as well. Penta had to fully commit to this 100% to get this reset. You can see Mailer now goes out wide. He sees the tanks. He'll get the reset just at the last moment, but of course there will be fire coming back in response. Still, he's alive. Somehow he gets the odds. Mailer still stands and he will now get up close and personal with these Wombats and try and stop them from getting that capture done. Mailer still lives. I don't know how it's possible, but he finally goes down back and forth. You can see Just Cosm got himself behind enemy lines. He's causing big problems for Bale. He's going to go down. Great focus fire from the Wombats. Taking out those key targets and now they push on. They've managed to lure Penta spawns in, and now they're going for the kill. The hunted now becomes the hunter. Because Rage of Potato, he sees everything. Is out of range. I've already honestly given themselves a considerable advantage in the first few moments. And Desek is still spotted. Um, great push out there by Tarantula. Very good counter. And actually, this push from KB is very effective yeah. as well. Uh, a heck of a lot of damage, Ollie, going on towards Senti. Milosh even tops a bit of it as well. Failware and Hellfish out towards the side. Just trying to get the angle on towards these forward tanks for out of range. And so far, not too bad, but they are being made to suffer. You see Failware and KB are being the subject of a lot of fire, and we do see Failware fall down. Yeah, KB can just start to uh, think about what they want to do next, because out of range, just pushing forward, being aggressive. Those TVPs are on reload, so they have a little bit of a rest oh, life, but not for long. That's Desig there as well, into more Mardi or two. That's a big hit from that artillery. Tarantula wasn't able to take him off the map. He got one shot towards it, but Desig still been out of cause problems on his own, even being threatened so closely by that 251. Now three tanks left, only Three here. Because Rusik is just looking towards Crux. He wants to get the finish off, but Crux did at least get rid of Formula. Still, I mean, out of range, if, if they had been a lot more effective at Killiam, they'll be way ahead in this game. And the Batchers on reload, that's the biggest problem here for them. You can see another shell bounce against the IS-7. Like, this damage should just be going straight through, and out of range will be absolutely rinsing them. Does TVP, uh, 50B now have shots to fire, and they do. They acquiesce. Not too, uh, none too quickly as well. Kerov now will try and come around the side, time it with his reload cycle. Out of range, Mylash should be able to take this round away if Kerov can actually can do some da damn hard damage. You can see though, there's two takes out towards the back. He can really isolate here. He has to be careful about the shots coming in from everyone else. It's a one for one. The shot comes in, Kerov now down. 
Let's see if they take a little bit of damage. We can finish off Paycat here as well. That's a very, very important passage to play because the defenders are only down to those two tanks. And I'll give you the big tip. Only, uh, only one of them is an auto loader here, and the 113 is in trouble. That's really going to hurt when you've got a fully loaded 50B coming straight towards you as well. You see Milos in the background. Can assist if he needs to, but easy enough. Get the finish. And Mighty Artur goes down. Hellfish still not fully loaded. Kerov going a little bit too far forward. Failfish was there to watch him as he rounded the corner. How close game. Hellfish? Hellfish. I don't know. There's Formula 1, though, and he's got a great few shots here on towards Hellfish. Look at the damage coming in as well. If E100 isn't going to be standing up for too much longer. Looks like out of range. Going to wrap this one up in a nice bow and send it. Good luck. Curling up. This could just be a straight up head to head. It looks like Synergy are looking for a fight. I mean, this is a perfect setup, though, for Ding. They've just got the perfect angles here. Diplomat's going to really punish now. Conquid is hoping to attract some attention or just some fire in towards him. Now, Diplomat can just let loose. This is the best situation possible for a Waffle Trucker E100 to do the damage. And he has indeed. Ludi Pablo is very very, very low. John is a one-shot. Hulknik sits around the corner. He has his own shot as well. Rakar has managed to pull the entirety of Synergy around the corner. He's like catnip and they've gone for the bait. Rakar now and Crestix will just trade blows here for a second, but Hulknik even gets the kill. Perfect use of the 110 E3 from Ding. Gotta love it. They're really making use of these immobile tank destroyers. You have to wonder if Diplomat is really going to be able to have the impact on that artillery here. As you said before, Kusok tried it. One of the best artillery players that we've seen in quite some time and still wasn't able to make the difference here for his team. So it's a risk, there's no doubt about it. Oh, really like. Like. Was that the artillery shot on towards Line him? shot, boys. Brilliant. Diplomat just wrecked him. So, I mean, he's completely, completely proved me wrong there. Stunning stuff from Diplomat. Shutting down that back chat so quickly. And that's really bad news for Synergy. Well, Ludi Pablo taking a lot of damage now as the push seems to be on for Ding and they haven't sustained too much damage in response so far. So pretty good for them if you're uh, if you're keeping this count at home, I guess. But now Synergy getting some shots back in response. They're keeping Ding fairly low. The damage is always going to be coming in here. Still a close one though. Very, very close. And Synergy within 100 hit points. And this is really important times now for Ding. They need to focus their fire. They've just lost another tank. Diplomat not really being a factor, but they've managed to isolate Mirsky. That is an important passage of play, and that's what's going to keep Ding going here now. Shockish has a hull to hide behind, and the damage is coming out so well. Synergy just don't seem like themselves at all. This is very, very poor from them. And Mihailov and Crespix now look at each other going, all right, bro, once more into the breach. Crespix now stands up against the entirety of Ding. He knows he is done. His goose is cooked. He is fortunately going to have to bow out of this one here as well. And it's a very sad, sad story for Synergy. Not even managing to manage around against Ding. Yeah, life's the beach for Synergy right now. 5-0 to Ding. I mean, what can we say about that? That was just an absolute stomp. We haven't seen such a one-sided match in a long time. You can always trust in Mitch to find some Shakespeare quotes somewhere throughout the WGL EU. But we did see, aside from that, in match week seven, a hell of a lot of changes towards the rankings. That top two got shaken up and everything beyond that felt the knock-on effect. There was a hell of a lot of changes there, Ollie. What are the big ones that stood out to you? Yeah, so we can have a look at the ranking table as we uh, head in towards the Super Week. I think for the biggest uh, upset of the week would have to be that Oops versus Kasna crew game, which obviously swapped that kind of top four positions. Oops going second, just below Tornado Rocks, even though on the same amount of time uh, points, and Kazakh crew going third because they lost 5-3. So that was a massive upset. No one expected newcomers to come in and beat the kind of uh, studded European veterans <laughs> of Kazakh crew. Yep. Ding as well, having a blast of a season. You could see they just got uh, the absolute stomp synergy in that game. Fantastic work for them. One bat starting to climb the leader as well, leaderboard as well as they start to catch up in terms of their matches. That top five, I can only imagine what it's going to look like at the end of this week. It's going to change once again, once again I can imagine. You know, Kasner's results have been here and there. They dropped down to third, as you noted. There's a lot to be seen. Now, they're facing off against Synergy today, but that's going to be the last game of the day. We have two preceding that. They're going to be extraordinarily good and also very important towards those rankings because, as you noted earlier, those offline finals are, you know, going to be on the horizon now, looking towards those playoffs. There's a lot on the line now to close out those final couple of points, especially throughout this week. What what couple of teams do you think really have the pressure on them coming into those final couple of game days? I think KB has a lot of pressure on them, considering they lost against Out of Range on Thursday, mm. which I don't think anyone really expected. Out of Range has been getting a lot better. Um, and KB, I think they're a team which really wants to do well in this season, that, you know, get into those pre-playoffs, yep. even if they don't make it to the finals. I think Utopia, who will be seeing first today, um, also one of those teams have got a lot of pressure on them. There's four Polish teams in the league. They're all sitting in that bottom four. Yep. You know, Utopia really has to start to... Well, Utopia's in seventh, but they, they are 
they were in the bottom four, three of them in the bottom four now. So they want to kind of fly the the flag for Poland as a, a massive community in World of Tanks and actually, mm -hmm. you know, make it to the pre-playoffs, make it to the finals because we haven't seen one in a long time. It has been a long time coming, so hopefully they can pick up the pace. And let's check out today's game so you guys know exactly what is kicking off this incredible amount of days of action. And it will be Oops against Utopia. You said Utopia are first. There they are facing off against Oops, who are currently in second place. So a very tough matchup there for them. RR facing off against Wombats on Tanks. We've started to see, find a little bit of that form, but it's certainly not as clean cut as before. And to close out, Kazna against Synergy. What's your match of the day? Definitely the first one. I think um, RR mm -hmm. looking in their current form, Wombats shouldn't have too much of a problem. Sinji as well, after that win against Wombats, haven't been particularly good, so I would definitely give that match to uh, Kaz and the crew. So for me, Utopia and Oops are, are pretty closely matched, and I think Utopia provides an ele element of like methodical gameplay, which Oops is not particularly used to yet. Okay, so maybe just a kind of favourable matchup or, or unfavourable matchup yeah. almost, I guess, that could cause some fireworks. So keep your eyes on that. And if you guys want to get your predictions and thoughts involved, I know the lady for you. Melly, take them through how exactly to do so. Well, it's actually pretty easy. So head over to our Facebook page, facebook.com slash WGLEU. The first thing you have to do is to like it because then you will stay updated about the happenings of our league if it's a new match day coming up or if we're going live or if there's any chance of getting bonus codes or if there's uh, content from the teams mm. uh, like the gold series um, highlights for example we will repost them on our Facebook page so you won't miss anything uh, I think Lauren you called it uh, as our social media hub that's mm. kind of the perfect way or Oli was you I have no clue but it's kind of the perfect way to put it there because there you will find all information that is somehow uh, well related to you guys at home in case of information or winning so head over there like the page and of course you will find also our um, giveaway app so our team voting app by clicking the little team vote bu button right above the timeline or the first posting on our timeline, of course. You will get forward where you simply have to choose your favorite team logo and then predict the exact scoreline for this matchup in the little text field below. Send it off, hope for the best, and the first three correct predictions will be rewarded with bonus codes. So, of course, you have time to get those votes in. So if you want to lay back and see the first few rounds, that's absolutely fine. But keep in mind, as the faster you get involved, the better your chances are of actually winning. So just have a wild guess. Sometimes it works wonders. Exactly that. There's your advice from Melee today. And uh, hopefully that gives you a good insight as to how you guys at home can get involved. But enough from us on the desk. I think you've heard enough of us for now. Let's actually hear from the teams themselves as to what they have to say about this matchup. Utopia, a Polish team, very strong from from the start of the season on. Um, we're going to prepare well for a tough match. Oops, uh, is the new team this season, but I know one thing for sure. If Grossa will not be playing, they might have a chance to win. Otherwise, we feel pretty confident. Ollie, I'm a little bit nervous. That almost sounded like banter. What's going I on know, there? Man, they're, they're looking confident. Yeah, I mean, sh sure. I mean, Hallucinogen has got some <laughs> banter. He's a, he's a good guy. He was obviously doing the season one um, kind of predictions for um, Utopia as well. Yeah, I, uh, he's called it. I would. That's my analysis as well. If Grosser isn't playing this match, uh, they have a good chance of winning Oops. If he is playing, <laughs> which undoubtedly will be, they are not going to win, I don't think so. We'll have to see. But yeah, um, it's going to be a super close match. I, I think... Oops is in that kind of uh, place right now where they're just winning back to back. Yep. The only team they've lost against this season so far, which is an incredible result, of course, they've won like a couple of tiebreaker wins, is against Tornado Rocks where they lost 5-1. But Utopia lost 5-3, so they did a better job against <laughs> that uh, Russian-speaking team. All right, let's start talking about the first map, which is going to be mines, if I'm not mistaken. What are we seeing them bring into this? And what are your thoughts on this head-to-head -head going down on this map? Well, I think... I think Oops, with their kind of faster style and the way they played against Castle Crew, where every single round, every single shot fired was really a crucial shot to make. I think this is one where Oops can win. 
Um, last time, both teams won on the attack when Kaz and Noobs played against each other. Utopia didn't have the greatest record on it. So for me, the first map, <sighs> Maybe a 2 0 for Oops, maybe a 1 1, but with a really close second round. Alrighty, on the defending side in the south, it's going to be Utopia, but to bring the fire, it's going to be Oops in the north on attack, and they are not messing around here. They're looking for that hill, possibly just to get the pressure there, but look at this a little bit of a different start card from Utopia. As you said, a methodical team, relatively passive to a degree, but they're certainly taking their time here and taking a more defensive route. Yeah, I mean, they've got the IS 7, they've got the Waffentrag Alpha 100, um, so they want to be slowing things up a bit. They got the artillery in the background as well. They got three bat chats, which is very interesting. I mean, normally when you have three bat chats, you send them straight up the hill, but it looks like Utopia have thought about this matchup before. They they want to kind of anti-strat oops who have been known to go, to go down this uh, one-liner somewhere, get spotted. And uh, let's see if the art artillery can land a shell. I mean, it's going to be crucial. I think with this kind of slower lineup, if oops can get these strategical advantages like where insane is or go on the hill, that artillery is going to be slightly negated, and um, that's where Oops can start winning this match. So you've heard the win condition there for Oops is getting that map control, making it hard work for Utopia to be able to utilize whatever they brought to this. As you said, it, it may have been an anti-strat to a degree from Utopia then, looking to maybe hinder anyone coming up that one line, but no one really went for it so far, and it looks like the vast majority of Oops just want to get that hill presence or at least dominate the middle. Now, if you're on Oops' side at this point, where's your next kind of piece going to be put towards? It looks like they sent a TVP towards the right side, and with the kind of slightly slower lineup, pushing that right side is obviously a big risk because, okay, you can kind of cancel out the fact that there's going to be a tank in K7, K8, because it's not going to be a particularly good hull down tank, um, the Waffentrag Alpha 100. So you can kind of think, okay, it's going to be an autoloader, so it's going to be down in K0 with the artillery piece where it can just sit behind a building, sit behind a bush, be unspotted until oops, push around that corner, and then you can just unload that 3,360 damage. So it will be risky if oops goes that way. Um, the bat chats have set up in J8, so maybe expecting oops to push forwards. But if I was oops, I would just, I would still be pushing that left side. I mean, when you've got, when you know 100% that the other team's playing defensively, that left side's definitely the best place to push. You take out the tank in H2, H1, and then you can move on, move through. You can start using artillery. You can push up to K4, K5, and you can start to uh, work your way through the defenses of the opposition. Pieces could fall into place for Oops here, but still a very cautious start from both sides to a degree. I guess Oops more being reactive to what Utopia bringing, not being able to take that initial fight, even though they certainly look for it. But still, as you said, they're taking over the hill. They're starting to move not actually on the left side. They're going towards the east at this point, putting two tanks out, the artillery moving across as well. Damnus has already relatively secured this to a small degree, but that IS-7 isn't too far away. So there's certainly still plenty of options available here for Utopia. And I'm, I'm wondering why we're not seeing Oops maybe testing out that left side. Maybe after, you know, whoever was up there, I'm not too sure who it was who got spotted. It was Fasty who maybe got spotted up there. I'm not too sure. No, tell a lie. It wasn't. Can't remember who that was. But still, once they got spotted, maybe just fancying, okay, maybe they've already got that something up their sleeve. Maybe they're trying to anti us. Maybe just trying to allow the artillery to actually have some time to work at this point, which could be very decisive in this case. Yeah, desha has got about nine meters of splash, so we can... Uh, HDGL actually. That's a really got, easy like, name to say. Thank you for that one. So he can actually shoot. Um, <laughs> Desha might be able to land the shot. Oh! Yes, he does. <laughs> Absolutely ruined that spat shot. Taken off the map. Wiped out. That's going to be a massive advantage for Oops now. That was absolutely savage. There we go. That's that's Oops's way in. That's like unlocked the door. You, hell, that's kicked down the door. That's the thing, I mean, Oops always playing super, uh, Utopia always playing super defensively. They always try and slow the map up. We can see, you know, this is mines. Normally it's very quick, very reactive, very fast. But when Utopia plays any map, they always slow it down. Mm. And Oops just found a nice way of just working their way into this map. They they make sure the batch has being put pressured by somewhere in the Object 140. So the batch has to reverse further back and then he can get the shot on the side with the uh, M40. But that does give the position away. Like, Utopia knows where that M40 is. So technically they could easily push around the corner and they can take out the M40. The problem being, of course, is that they've gone for a bit of a heavy lineup. And also those T125s from Oops could be ready and waiting. 
It certainly could be. There's there's a lot still to be seen from both these teams, as you said, with Utopia being so defensive, not necessarily scouting much of the map as well. Add that to boot. Both teams working off minimal information thus far, but the small piece that Oops did gather really did pay off so well. Desha going down was just absolutely outstanding. And now I'm wondering if Oops are going to consider once again going over to that left side. We noted earlier they do have a preference for pushing it. It seemed that Utopia were even aware that they did like that kind of, you know, Western side presence but they negated it early on, left just somewhere there, spotting out, seeing what he could gather, allowed the artillery to come into play, and now look at it, the route's a little more open, a little more vulnerable, and they basically got that for free. It cost them, what, maybe six minutes? Mm. Yeah, I mean, it cost them a few minutes for but sure. That's just utopia, no, that's that's how it goes. Um, but we can see Dimnus and the rest of Oop starting to head around that left side, and as you said, you know, they opened the door very nicely with the... Uh, Batchat kill from the M40, M43. So this is going to be super easy for them to push through. Of course, you mentioned as well the time being a bit of a problem for Oops. It's, you know, they've taken their dear time to start to break down Utopia, as you would expect. Um, but they still got plenty. I mean, their Waffen Drag Alpha E100, if it peaks, it can easily be one shot by the uh, uh, the M40, M43 of HD GDL. Um, so he's got to be careful. He can't peak too much. And of course, the artillery being just behind him as well is vulnerable. There are some real weaknesses among the Utopia side, but it does seem as though they're going to continue. What we'd expect to some aspect is pushing these three tanks across, and we could not hitting anything on the cross there. The TVP in the back line's trying to do a little bit of damage, but normally you'd see a good chunk of damage coming through, but minimal to be created as Utopia had no presence towards the hill. They're being extremely passive, and again, shots coming in. But here's the counter move, at least in their minds, is pushing towards the east. Yeah, the, um, the T-125 has spotted them. I think the artillery is uh, maybe a lost cause by now. Yes, it does get spotted. Uh -oh. So <laughs> it's going to get taken now. Yeah, very easy as well. Bishu's going to just close that one down. But by now, hopefully Utopia had that in mind. There's always going to be a response to their move here. Oh, but again, that is not what you want to be seeing if you're an Oops fan. These artillery plays coming out have been massive thus far. Now, bear in mind, those bat chats are en route. There's an amount of time here. Oops may be able to work something out. But still, this is going to get dangerous and pretty darn quickly. Unbelievable. Two one-shots in one game from artillery. That just doesn't happen these days. You know, it's been a long time since the days of the Hummel and the GV Panther. So let's see what can happen as they do push the hill. Ooh, but a little bit of fire came in. Maybe didn't expect so much presence here, but insane. I think he's absolutely ruined as well. Look at the damage he's taken in that IS-7. Down to 619 HP, but that's not long for this world. Great defensive play from Duck of Death, trying to soak up this damage. And there we go. Takes him down in response. A little bit of fire finally comes out, but another kill comes in from the artillery. Insane falls. And Utopia are keeping the upper hand here. They definitely are. They're uh, about 200, 300 HP ahead in terms of damage, but uh, it's going to be a problem. I think Shukyu is going to have to try and spring his trap at some point in time. Oops still have the heal so they can slow the game down a bit and Shuku is just going straight across the middle. That's dangerous moves for him. It really is and somewhere whiffs the shot is not what you want to be seeing at this point and Silence does find Wicked but we're once again seeing this in a very close matchup here. Higher HP however with Oops but they need to make the moves and this tank is about to do some serious work for them. Shukyu needs to land these shots, though. He needs to get into this game and really make his presence noted. Bear in mind, Oops only have just under two minutes to work with, but Shukyu gets called out from the back, and it looks like Duck of Death and Silens want to do what they can while they're alive here, and the damage is going to continue. Shukyu's in trouble. Again, another shot lands, and one more will seal the deal. He's down and out of there. Oops is starting to dwindle in numbers, though. Look at the time, though. One minute and 35 seconds left on the clock. It's been an absolute terror of a game for Papa Pabby. Let's see if he can do more silence. Kind of screws up the drop there. I think Forbidden might have found a shell on the side, and he is now a one-shot. Keep in mind that Batchat in the back lines is considering when do I run away at this point. They can't allow the other tanks to fall too easy, but Forbidden's going for this one. Bishu's coming back into the action. They're going to go for this one minute left. Oops are down to four players, though, so they don't have a great deal to work with, but Utopia need to be cautious and not give away the game, but they're not. They're keeping this one to check, and now 3v2. This one looks almost over. Papa Pavin is absolute beast. Summer finally finds him, but it wasn't in time. The damage has been done. One minute left on the clock. 1,481 HP left for Utopia. Batchat, though, is definitely the biggest advantage they have right now. Yeah, Forbidden's, you know, done. He's dead. But Bishu, needs Bishu to be can run away. Yeah, I think he's doing well as well. He already started to head towards the north. So Damnus might find Forbidden here. He probably will, to be fair. Oh, maybe not. Come on, then. Hit the shot already, man. He's just missing this like a champion. This is not how you want to go down at this point. But then again, time has run out by this point. 30 seconds, I just don't think is enough for anyone to get near Bishu at this point. And he knows exactly where that TVP is. 
So I'm pretty sure he's safe by now. He can just tuck himself away. And while well, Damnus and somewhere just have to sit there and scratch their heads by this point. Yeah, they don't have enough time to actually get into A1. Um, this game is pretty much done and dusted. Of course, the defender wins if that timer goes down to zero. So it's going to be utopia to put the first round on the board. And we did mention at the five minute mark that Oops pot potentially couldn't have enough time to actually uh, win this one because of the kind of entrenched positions Utopia had at the beginning of that mm. match. And I think that's really what sums up the game. Utopia played the super slow style where, you know, for instance, against Casa Crew, it's just both teams playing very similar tactics, going up against each other, yeah. and whoever won the brawls wins. This time around, Utopia slows it down and, uh, you know, managed to keep the game in their hands, make sure they, they have the right spots, the right information. Mm. I think, obviously, the most crucial kill was onto that TVP. Um, if that TVP was alive, it would have been uh, game over completely. They would have enough damage to go through and win it. But mm. then again, um, HDGDL also managed <laughs> to get the shot against uh, Desha in yep. the bat chat. So it kind of counts each other out. But Papa Pavian was the savior there, definitely. And how many times has he delivered as well? You know, there, there's a lot of talented artillery players just coming to the forefront. It's brilliant to watch, to be completely honest with you. And every single week, time and time again, we're starting to see consistency with the artillery that we hadn't seen. I'd say, you know, before the last maybe two or three weeks, you know, they'd been making big shots, but not on a regular basis yeah. that you can depend on it. And now people seem to be warming back up to the idea, really committing to it, and it's actually paying off. But the one thing I want to say about Utopia is they didn't, they, you know, at, at the early stages when Utopia were kind of coming through, they were a very passive team. They always relatively have been. But it was nice to see them actually taking initiative with those bat chats as well, actually putting them out there and not just kind of sitting back and hoping for the best. You know, Bishu was rolling around doing what he could, and it actually paid a hell of a lot of dividend. Yeah, they did. It was, you know, such a good game for them. Jesus, but, Papa. you know, Look Papa doing 4,169 Papa, damage. Please. That's some of the most damage we see full stop, and that's delivered by an artillery player. <laughs> um, yeah, unbelievable stuff. It's truly stuff of legend. That's what happens when you can connect all the shells you need to connect in an M40. It normally doesn't happen because of the dice roll factor of artillery these days. Mm. But this time around, it did. And um, it, certainly, uh, it certainly paid off them. Again, the rest of Utopia didn't do much, but he was just landing shell after shell. Yeah, exactly. And... Uh... I guess when someone's almost carrying the game that hard, you just have to kind of complement it as best you can. He hit two out of two shells and five splash damages. So it's ridiculous. That's insane stuff. That's seven out of nine hits, basically. That's that's insane. Be able to hit that sort of percentage of accuracy is ridiculous. So now let's kind of flip the switch here because Utopia are known as a defensive team. Mm. Just in the play style. How does that transfer to the attack here? As they'll be going into that on the second half. Well, I think they'll go for something a little bit heavier. Um, they will just be wanting to get that middle area and they'll play it slowly. Uh, it doesn't look like they've gone for artillery piece. So obviously, you get to look at the uh, lineups in a second. But mm -hmm. yeah, I think they're going to slow it down a little bit. And this is where Oops really need to start to get into gear because yep. if they get a little bit disheartened by that previous game, it's going to cost them a lot, even though that didn't seem to happen against Kazna. So let's see. But you can see they've gone for the T125s. They've gone for the IS7s. So a heavier lineup. Try and go hold down the middle. Try and win the exchanges. All right. A lot on the line here. You want to keep that momentum up. As you said, if you're Utopia, getting the first round on the board is a great way to get things started. But then again, Oops don't seem to be the team that tilts like that, as we noted before. But still, fresh minds coming into the second half. Hopefully they're experienced enough to reset. If you're a fan of Oops, they can just clear their mind, say, OK, no worries. It's first round. Utopia on the defense. We're kind of used to it. But still. Time for the second round here, second half if you must. First round did go to Utopia, but now they're on the attack. Maybe not perfectly complementing their style, but let's see what they can bring here. It's Oops on the defensive side who want to stop it before Utopia gets that you know, momentum, gets that confidence. And what do we see so far? Looks like they're doing the classic Na'Vi tactic. I've seen this a lot on the Russian and CIS server. They send a, a scout forwards, an RU-251 in this case, and they have all the rest of their tanks back just ready for whatever crosses and they just cancel it out and they move on to the next thing. But that doesn't ha hasn't really happened here. It, it's unusual for a team not to send a tank into H2 uh, or J2, but I think Oops are under the impression and know that's what Utopia want to do and as well. When Kasner and Oops played against each other, this is exactly the same tactic Oops used against them. It got absolutely wrecked, but um, I'm surprised Utopia didn't realize that and haven't maneuvered a little bit more quickly as soon as that 113 spot came out. Maybe Utopia getting a little ahead of themselves on this one. You know, sometimes it's great when you come up with these tactics or, you know, not necessarily copy a tactic, but keep one in mind. But you have to be so aware of the other pieces into play at this point. And we're going to see the camp being started, so they're certainly looking to cause Oops to make a move. And this is quite an assertive start for Utopia. 
Yeah, it is. They are going straight into the cap. It's always an interesting tactic. And I guess considering there's no tank in K3 and no artillery from Oops, it could work out. There is a position just to the left of somewhere where you can actually boost up and you can shoot down. Mm. But those 113s don't have the greatest gun depression. So it looks like Oops going for a different strategy, going to push against those T110s. Might be a bit of a suicide mission. We'll have to see. Yeah, I think they're holding back a TVP just to do for almost suicide peak if required, but 10 seconds now on this, you're going to see them coming around, and Fussy Eat is the first in. He's going to be the man just to try and take all the shells as they do finally crest the corner. Eight seconds, there's the reset. Damnus is the one to be gathering. Nazi Lens pushes forward, but Mooka's down to nothing. Utopia are doing a lot of damage, though, bearing in mind. Oops are doing just the same, but they're racking up the kills, and Damnus from the back lines is doing everything he damn well can, and Shook finally does something, but by this point, Utopia aren't in the best position in their initial your plan has kind of gone to well tatters yeah as soon as shook you have to start reloading after those five shots in the bat chat it's going to be very hard for utopia to keep up with the dpm with the buff of the 113 which has had recently dumbness is going to go down for sure bit of a paper tank but honey is going to be able to clean up uh, shook at the same time yeah three tanks now remaining for utopia they took an aggressive stance at the start here but papa pavian certainly not gonna be able to hit that 4k beautiful marker he had before Especially when he's got four tanks there, and I'm insane's got a shot lined up, and he's going to get it as well. So, Wicked and Desh are the last two standing. I think Desh is not too sure what to do as he's not been picked up in the first 30 seconds by an artillery play uh, coming out. But by now, they're going to do whatever they can to stop this, and actually, they bring it back to a 3v2. Yeah, this is good stuff from Utopia. You can see the pure damage of that, what, one and a half second time between shots from the TVPs. And uh, Desh is trying to keep on spotted by just staying perfectly single file with Wicked. But uh, Amarak on the insane could cause problems for Oops, and he's been known to crumble under pressure in these kind of uh, clutch situations. Um, let's see, I mean, 2,600 damage is the burst potential from those TVPs. So they could take out potentially 1.5 1 of, 1 .1 of, 1 of these tanks. So technically, this should easily be Oops' game if they can find good angles onto these two. Yeah, both of them being spotted now. The players noted from Utopia, they know exactly where they're sat at this point, Wicked and Desha, they're just looking for opportunities, and I'd be very surprised if Oops gives them this at this point. Oops do have the upper hand, they have the higher ground, they have pretty much the cap locked off. If Utopia try and cross out of here, maybe back to more of a central position, they're going to get spotted, but Utopia do like to play the clock. They may just try and test Oops' patience by this point, but I'm going to say so far, spots are consistent, and really I don't see these two getting away with much. No, and of course uh, Oops on the defensive side, so they just have to hold tight. Keep keep uh, keep Utopia away from those caps. Make sure that they can't get killed. And Honey is just being a perfect spotter right now. You can see Wicked just got tracked there by a nice heat shell that uh, came across the planes from somewhere. So yeah, this is just going to be about keeping these TVP spotted, making sure they can't cross that cap number one. Obviously, they can't go for cap number two. Some burst damage is coming out from them as Honey just gets blind shot in that bush. It's made it relatively out alive, and not much damage was reciprocated back, but. Those consistent spots may be relatively hindered at this point now. Desha and Wicked might have a little bit more room to breathe, but Honey's certainly not going too far away at this point. He's just going to back out of this one. Maybe find a, a position where he can still provide some sort of information to the other two who are playing from that one, maybe two line at this point. So, already Wicked still trying to get those blind shots, trying to make sure that Honey's not there, utilizing what he had left. But time is going to start running out soon. Exactly. Um, timers of the essence here for Utopia, and it's just you know it's just going to play like this for a bit. I think Insane somewhere could go forwards and just win this one outright in a in a one on one engage. Um, mm -hmm. Honey has got coated optics, so he's got those 10% uh, view range buff. He might be able to find some shots into the back of Wicked here. Um, and uh, that you know the thing is, if he hits a few shells here, he's going to be able to bring Hun uh, Wicked down to a low enough percentage that they can just go forwards and actually kill him. Um, he's also trying to do that 50 meter trick where you stand behind the bush far enough that the bush still provides camo. Don't believe he did that then if he got spotted. <laughs> well, he's still doing his job relatively well at this point. He knows where they both are. But then again, him being spotted may open up an opportunity if they wanted to maybe make a push. But then again, they, they've got a little bit of time to wait here. Oh, lovely little shot on the cross as well. Desha being picked apart there. And the more shots that come through, the less and less likely this becomes to work out in any favor towards Utopia. Yeah, so... I mean, it's just a waiting game right now, a patience game from, from both these two. I think, you know, Wicked and Desha are kind of scratching their heads exactly what they want to do. In the end, you know, they're going to lose anyway, so I'm not exactly sure why they're not just pushing across the map and 
and ending this game or, or just having a potential for winning it because they're going to get picked apart by, by Honey Frack on the hill uh, or they're just going to lose the game because they run out of time. So I'm not sure exactly why they aren't just going for some sort of movement here. I, I genuinely think they're just trying to test the patience of Oops by this point, but... Yeah. You know, Oops are just showing a discipline. They know that the game is pretty much in their hands, but they shouldn't throw this in any way by pushing forward. This this is a game that is theirs from the start. Let's be honest here. There's very little these two can do, and maybe just discussing the upcoming map, saying, okay, guys, what sort of opportunities do we have to go forward? What can we really bring on this one? And, well, I think they know that it's going to waste the time here of the other side. Yeah, exactly. It's just... It's a bit weird from them. I mean, this is Utopia. They always seem to play the slow style regardless of the match. This is extreme for them. Though. Yeah, this is extreme. Like, just... Yeah, I mean, this is like the point in StarCraft, for instance, when you know you're going to lose because you're, win you're just losing the economy battle or whatever. You should just give up. And, yeah, it looks like Dasha Wicked starting to push forwards, though, and they finally are going to bite the bullet and just uh, take, take what they deserve in this game. Yep. And uh, staring down the barrel here pretty much. And there's two shots. One more will seal the deal towards Wicked. Someone's got a couple of seconds to wait by this point. But Honey's there covering off from the side as Desha. Last man standing. Going to be cleaned up nice and easily by Honey. And that is going to be Oops back in the game at 1-1. One one. Yeah, I mean, two minutes into that game, we already knew the winner, basically. And yeah. it took a few more minutes for um, Utopia to realize that they really had no options on the card. And... Uh, mm -hmm. Decided just to go and see if they could do a little bit of damage, see if they could get lucky maybe with an Amarak or something like that, but it didn't work out that way. And yeah, I mean, Oops just pushing around that corner. Fantastic coordinations with the the, the TVPs, the RU251 as it well, taking care of uh, the batch out of Bishu. So, you know, that 113, it's got a fantastic rate of fire, 440 damage. It just wrecks those T110s very quickly. Mm. Cap was easily taken care of by Damnos. He even, I think he might have just got lucky there because he even found the RU251 yeah, of, he, he of Utopia. He stayed a hell of a long time at the position. I thought yeah. it would be a one and done, you know, get the reset, but then instantly focused out. But yeah, no. I thought I thought Utopia would just push around the corner, take care of Damnos, and then yeah. maybe move on to the middle of the hill. But they decided to hold their ground and not peek against him. And I think that's probably what caused them to, might may, may have been one of the reasons why they lost the game. Yeah, it's it's going to be a factor there and I think that's maybe what they were discussing in those kind of closing minutes and just kind of recapping what went wrong how they can change it making sure they don't do that in the maps coming up of course we are at one to one so it's not exactly the worst start in the world uh, for Utopia it's just that last round it seemed a little bit of a flawed plan as you said once Damnus did come into the action and dealt with the cap and that was pretty much all the cards off the table however do we know the next couple of maps coming up uh, looks like we've got steps next on the board, so I mean it's good to see some more open maps. So uh, we've been treated to a lot of mm. Ghost Town and Himmelsdorf recently, so it's going to be interesting. Again, the artillery factor coming into the equation, where both teams have had some good rounds, uh, especially Pap Pavian, obviously that 4.4k did earlier. Hashtag balanced, but you know <laughs> it's uh, it's going to be an interesting map. I think again, both these two teams not particularly. Uh, Experience, I guess Utopia is slightly more experienced, so this is where they could come back into uh, to the game. I think right now, though, Oops is is playing the better tanks. I, I tend to agree. I think the first map was decided by some um, curious factors. I think Papa Pavian being that factor. Yeah. Um, then again, if he can find some consistency to do, not necessarily 4K in a round, but you know, somewhat close to that, there are other players in that side who can play a very pivotal role, and you've got to hope that maybe they can find that coming up. But then again, you know, this this map can be played relatively passively. It can be played to a defensive style. I'm just not sure if their attacks can ever keep up. And I feel in the end, you're going to see who's pick up one defending side if it has to come down to just who wins attack and defense. Um, but still, overall scoreline, Ollie, what what are you thinking for this matchup? Well, I think it's going to be a pretty close one. I think 5-3 to Oops is realistic. Um, but Utopia seem to have a plan. And this map here, they've got about 65% win ratio on it. Um, Oops, about 25%. So this is technically their map, as I said before. So it could go 3-1. to one. Um, But of course, I mean, it's such a balanced map. Regardless of you're on the attack or defense, in fact, the attack is definitely slightly more favored on this one. Mm. It, 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 it's whoever plays better this map. I mean, Steps is so so open, so balanced, so so interesting to watch. Yeah, it certainly is a very creative field for these two teams. 
just do what they want with it, paint it the way they desire, and create their own battle lines. It is one that's provided many incredible games, and we're going to get to see it again here with Oop starting out on the attack, and Utopia in their favorite position in the defensive side, up in that northeast corner. Now, I wonder how they're going to start this. Will they go for the boost? I think it was Papa Pavian before who got put up towards that, and they created a lovely little crossfire, and they made it extremely hard work for anyone to hinder it, but a little bit of damage coming through there, but Papa should be able to make it up and look at this. I wonder if that's going to straight through. Yeah, he has to make the shot, and I think he will make it. Yes, he does. Oh, oh Luca. my God. This, this could be huge. Is he going to go down? He won't, he won't. Yes, He's he gone. will. Unbelievable. Again, no, oh, they Papa to, just got They there. managed to get the boost up, of course, once. once uh, I mean, you could move Rex since a long time World of Tanks, but it's harder to move a Rex when you get wrecked, so... I mean, that's fantastic stuff from HTGL. Most teams, well, a lot of teams, they like to wait for like 30 seconds. Yep. So you wait for that blind shot from the artillery piece, and then you do whatever you got to yep. do, aka push another tank up. Yep. Utopia didn't do that, and they get punished for it. They, they are a team that's been stacking that out on every single time they play this special or defending side, and you will get punished. You, you keep rinsing and repeating these things. Now, before McMoney found a lovely little position in one of these bushes that also complemented what Papa was doing so well. Now, they still have that element in play, but without Mooka being there, this is going to become extremely hard. Now, if Oops are already aware of the boost, they might be aware of this as well, because this was what you know, allowed Utopia to do so much work before. So I'm wondering if they've actually really paid attention to Utopia's playstyle, mm. or if they're like, well, they're going to do the boost, but they maybe didn't look into maybe the finer details. Yeah, this is the classic Utopia playstyle on this map. They were always those guys to put Papa Pavian in C6, and they put Mug Money in that same bush so many times before in these matches. So I wouldn't be surprised if HD just finds another couple of shells onto those bushes. He's got so many in those Lorraines. It's such a big open tank that he might just be able to find McMoney and uh, take the second tank out of his game. So, I mean, Oops have options now, though. They've gone for the artillery, so it's kind of cancelled out the option of the C3 area. Mm. But they can just push through A5 and uh, just push into the defensive lines of Utopia. They've gone for quite a light lineup with those uh, STBs and TVPs. Um, other options, I mean, pushing that right side still still potential because then they can put pressure straight away onto Utopia, which will allow HD to start to work in the artillery piece. Um, but it looks like right now they've sent their medium tanks up north, but the artillery hasn't moved, so maybe that's not a long-term plan. Hmm. Wondering now if they're waiting for those spots to come out and maybe light up and expect where money will be at this point. Fussy's having a good look at this. Firing out, not going to find him, I don't think, at this point. Money is going to be able to stay alive. Again, that position probably paying off well if they do eventually go for that C3 area. That is relatively unlikely, but they could push up, as you said, further north and try and make the play towards a, south, you know, a slightly more eastern position. But still, every time you get spotted, you can see these boys getting a little nervous here. That artillery has made another shell, and oof! Shook just about avoids it. Now, Duck of Death is getting lit up. They've got to know where Money is now. Exactly, so now Oops is going to be pushing forwards. I think this is probably the most logical route. Um, but the thing is, Mugmani with that AMX 3090, very small, very compact tank, very hard to spot. Um, I think he's realized, though, he did move. That's very careless from him. Of course, as soon as you move in Wales Tanks, you initiate spotting check. As Duck of Death receives one from Papa Pavian, as he was boosted up. Maybe Oops weren't expecting Papa to have been boosted up, even though they made that kill. But Utopia did manage to get him up there just in the nick of time. But, I mean, you can see where Oops are. They're in the north. They're in the east as well. And maybe Utopia just wants to collapse on these tanks which are sitting in the east. There's no one in the K67 area, so they're kind of exposed. This could this could spell trouble to a degree here. They've spotted out these two tanks. There's three for Utopia here now. Shook has taken another shell, but... He's relatively safe at this point, and Desha and Wicked could do some real work. Shook's with them too, so actually... These two tanks on their own could be in some sort of trouble. They're going to start the cap off, though, in C3, trying to get some pressure to hinder these three just slightly further towards the south. But Damnus is being chased down. Wicked wants this. Yeah, definitely. They just want to go in and try and get these kills, but the cap is going to be the most cru the crucial part if they can oh. make it happen. Wicked's in trouble here as well. He's done a lot of damage, but not more than Damnus by this point. But Desha has a full load ready and waiting. And there we go. They've got the tank advantage, at least in this aspect, back to their favor. But now, can they keep it up? See, Lens does come through, and Shook is there on the other side. But the cap's still going on. Money's still alive. I'm not sure what Oops are doing here. They're getting picked apart, actually. Fossey's taking a shot, too. This is suddenly going relatively badly. Shook has one more shell to make, and he's probably going to deliver it. Papa's found another. And I thought... 
for some reason, maybe Oops had read the book of Utopia, but apparently not. They've got cover on the cap, which is a bonus, maybe negating Papa to a degree, but this is still far from ideal. The problem is that Shuku can just make shots across to these two tanks. They can also get shot, and McMoney is going to have to push in. Uh, Duck of Death is going to have to push in, and McMoney is going to fall here shortly. There we go. Finally takes him off the board, but this is the positions they needed. Slightly better positioning coming out, and maybe this was the ultimate plan for Desher and Shuku to get the angle towards this cap, if required. And by this point, that artillery is looking, you know, a million miles away from being able to do much here. Duck of Death just trying to be the bait here. Slow down the likes of Bishu and try and get some time on that cap, but they know there's not a great deal of time left to get this done. Yeah, the artillery is on the cap, actually, so it's going to be the second line of defense, two tanks sitting behind it. It's a big old piece, so it can provide a lot of cover. Duck of Death just needs to keep Bishu at bay. Can he do it, though? He's down to a one-shot pretty much here. Nine seconds on this cap now. This might get very, very close by this point. There goes Duck of Death. He did what he could. Four seconds left. They're trying to keep this one going. And actually, they've all been spotted. But someone has to land a shot pretty damn fast. Oh! Finally, Bishu comes up with the goods. Finally, they deliver. But this is still very, very close. See if Insane can actually make the shell. No, they can't. They all get reset at the same time. There's only one second left. And Insane force the wicked. And that is going to be Utopia doing what they do best. Time and time again, they bring the strategy out. And... It keeps working. Yeah, I mean, they just they just managed to win those exchanges. I mean, it was like one and a half, two seconds away from managing to get the cap there for Oops. But I felt at the beginning, okay, you got that fantastic kill from the STV. I mean, you could see that Oops lost that game having got a free kill onto a tier 10 tank. That's unbelievable. But then you had the TVP on its own, which is never a good thing since yep. it can't one clip a tier 10 tank at 100% HP or even 80%. Um, and then you had uh, the STP-1 there as well. So you had those two tanks kind of in charge of slowing down the whole of uh, Utopia to stop them getting those cross shots into the cap. Um, but they were killed pretty quickly. And, yep. and there was still like 30 seconds left on the cap because of McMoney's position there in the bushes, which is like a p position he's always in. So I have yep. no idea why the team so just blind shot it. Um, especially considering Duck of Death there as actually getting you know spotted in that T62A. And they did get very close to capping. Very, very close indeed, but it just wasn't quite enough. And um, you can see, apart from that initial shell, HD only managed to land one more for uh, like 48 damage. Really not good there. I think that might have been on towards, I think it was Shook who took that in the end, but he stayed alive long enough to keep the damage rolling. And and after what was a brilliant and inspired start, I'm, I'm a little disappointed in Oops, to be fair. They're, they're certainly not becoming the thinking man's team. Um, if you're a fan of that playstyle, there are, there are very clear counters to what makes Utopia great on the defending side on this very specific map. And to see them not really kind of using that to their advantage is a little bit disappointing in my eyes at least. But then again, you know, them maybe not expecting Papa to be in that position wasn't the worst in the world. It happens, yeah. right? You know, the chance of him being boosted up was very slim. It was down to a second or two. Okay, cool. But then the rest of it, you know, money staying alive and then just seeing them kind of just pile into the cap and hope for the best seemed a little lackluster to my eyes, especially considering this is a top two team. Yeah, I mean, the you cap know, is always hard. That's the it thing. Is. It is relentless, but there were so many other opportunities for them they just didn't seem to take. Now, the problem for me is that I'm now going to start not criticizing them, but putting them in the same bracket as other teams in the top three. They're not just a new team to this league anymore. They're a team that have beaten very good teams. Yeah. Now, Utopia does seem to be their kryptonite because of this very slow, methodical play. But still, if you're in that top two, you've got to you know, really hammer down teams who are seventh. That shouldn't happen you know it's it's like saying oops you know we're losing rounds to kb or you know or it, it, it's not what's meant to be happening here they should be locking this down but still i'm being harsh because they are in the top two they deserve it you know yeah. um but still let's let's take into account now the coin is gonna be flipped now last around utopia did lose out on their attacking side quite severely is that going to happen again this time um, I think so. Um, I mean, the attacking side on this map has about 65% win ratio, so it's actually more in favor of the attack. And as you mentioned, I think, you know, oops, just not going for the engagements there was super crazy for my, my eyes. I mean, the cap is always a big risk. Um, one reset and you just get done, basically. Mm. Um, so I, I'm wondering, I think Utopia, um, maybe something a little bit more slower I think maybe even going for that right side with an IF7 or a T125 send it first get control of the cap number two and then just have the rest of the tanks in behind and support something like that well, there's certainly a, a hell of a lot of plans afoot with these guys. And I'd like to see Utopia bring in something a little different. It seems as though they brought a strategy on their attack in minds, but it just didn't pay off, and Damn has pretty much hindered all of it. So I'm wondering if maybe they've got something in store here. As you said, they are quite the kind of defensive passive team. Anything standing out to you in this? Well, actually, it's uh, it's... 
it's oops with the, the slower lineup. They've gone on I7 mm -hmm. and T110E5, which is uh, maybe a little bit to be expected on the defensive side, but um, looks like Utopia going for something more normal with uh, faster medium tanks, TVPs. The STB is very crucial in this map. Object 140, so you can expect maybe a hold down position. And just off the bat, they are going towards that left side. Okay. Let's see what you got, Utopia. I want to see something impressive here from you. Because this would be a massive win for them. Bearing in mind how close the current standings are around that kind of seventh to, I guess, fourth place. You know, three points here or there could make a big difference. And, oh, God, if anyone blind fires this. There's a 1390 looking over in there's this no direction. Artillery. But there's no artillery in this sort of spot here that can do much damage. But Damnus should be able to make it up here unscathed. And it looks as though while this happens, Utopia just piling through towards the north. Yeah, I didn't watch that Tornado Rocks uh, highlight movie where they're <laughs> talking about the T-125. 50 tons of pure steel on the hill, shooting down towards cap number two. <laughs> Brilliant stuff from them. Uh, but HDGL, a very interesting position at uh, AMX CDC. It's a fairly big box of a tank that uh, French uh, tier eight. So I'm not sure exactly what he mm. expects to, uh, to achieve, but I, I guess they've trained it time and time again. He's got a bush straight in front of him. He's got a bush to his right, and he's also got a fallen tree, which also acts like a bush. So he's got a lot of bushes. Um, a lot of bush there. But maybe he's going to push over, and it actually looks like Utopia going to push over the train tracks. Down that one to five line, and actually oh, Papa Pavian going for that boost as well. Nothing wrong with a bit of bush, but still. Papa, Bishu, all of them lining up here. We saw this boost. I'm trying to think you did it first at this point, or at least you did it a hell of a lot in... Many a seasons ago by this well, marker. I think we, there's I, been a few. Oh, we've seen what? it a few times. Okay. They're just not. I've seen this before from one match, like trying to blind shot this area and not quite getting the right directions here. It's not as common, I guess, as what Oops went for. Ah, uh, that's beautiful, though. I, I, I have seven, the least accurate tank there. Smashing smack into the side <laughs> of Bishu. Bishu's going to be sad. It's like, really? When he watches this back, a little one tank. That was close that was again. Bounce. They've got to know they're there now, though. Yeah, I mean, for sure. They might as well keep blind firing because... Oh, Amex EDTC was spotted and actually goes across, but doesn't find the view range to actually land the shell. Papa Pavin does get spotted. He's got binocular telescopes, but you need three seconds for them to activate to get that 25% view range. And I really want to see what this Amex EDTC is going to be doing in this spot. As you said, the 1390 before kind of makes sense with my money playing it in that sort of position, but, you know... He had cover, and he's been able to actually make it away alive. So I guess I can't judge too much by this point. And again, Oop's not really losing out on anything by now. I, I, would, I would have really been interested to see if HDGGL just pushed over that, that uh, train line at the beginning mm. and just suicided in. The amount of damage Oop's would have been able to put over towards Utopia onto those uh, boosting tanks. That would have been super interesting to me. But he, he goes for it a little bit too late, and, um, well... I think Oops has probably received a little bit more damage at the beginning. Duck of Death and uh, HD have gone down a little bit. You've got the Batchat heading down to that standard position in uh, K6, K5. It's just going to be boosted up onto that mountain to make sure that Utopia isn't coming from two angles. But the TVP is already on the move. Okay, Utopia, what's the next step of this plan? I'm still curious, because Papa Bavian does so well in these spots. You, you kind of put him in these positions and he really does come through, but... Fossi Ita in the back lines. They're going to get a hell of a lot of information very soon and probably a lot of damage towards him, but still, he will know exactly where these two are going to be going. They have served the cap to the north, but still, this is a very scattered presence from Utopia. It's going to be interesting, though. I mean, this is pretty standard tactic so far. Interestingly enough, they got the Object 140 in that hold down position. Wicked does get spotted, Fossi Ita as well. So, I mean, so Utopia can just push against this bat chat. It's going to take a long time for him to go down. He's going to get support in the background from that STB. Um, from the AMX CDC and the STB in that right side. So this is going to be interesting. I mean, if they commit, they're going to lose a lot, but they also take down a bat chat. So many things uh, could happen. But it looks like those STB and the AMX CDC are going to start rotating around down towards the south and going to try and cross off, cancel out the ones that have pushed forwards. It's a very scattered engagement from both sides. Duck of Death's taken a lot of damage to get to this sort of spot here in the IS-7, but... Gets tracked, gets hit as well. That's not ideal by this point. He's down to not necessarily a one shot, but he's down to 317. You can see him still soaking up a little bit of damage from Mooker in the back lines, but they've halted the cap. 
but look at what they've gained from it. They've gone Duck of Death pretty low. They've forced to rotate down in the south, but now they're outmatched here. There's an overmatch in the south about to come through. That CDC, just about everything now piling in. Desha and Wicked are going to be in trouble. Shukyu did find Duck of Death in the end, but that's one tank picked up. Can they make this any more costly? The bat chat's going to be a massive crux here. It'll be able to do so much damage compared to those TVPs. As soon as those TVPs sh shoot these last two shells, and HG just managed to soak a lot, it's going to be game over for them. He's pretty much played his role now. Where is the damage coming through from those Batchats? You caught it before. Fussy needs to land him. There we go. Finally coming in. The STV might be able to close out. Desha here even takes an additional shell. They're piling everyone into the camp now from Utopia, trying to split the attention of Oops as best they can. Wicked gets swept away. And now just one tank towards the south, holding back the wave of Oops that's about to come through. And Insane wants to get these shots, but Shook is pushing forward. He wants to hold him back. Ten seconds going to be coming in on that cap very soon. The time is going to start becoming a little bit of a factor here. Shook's just trying to play the defense. Sprawl, he's playing it well. Nicely done by Shook. Just going to sit in the way as best he can. Buy them every single second possible. But in the south, they're free now. Insane desperately looking for the shot. Two seconds left. This could work for Utopia. One shell comes in. No one lands it. And there we have it. Utopia picking up the attack. And what a defensive play from that team as well. Not just about those three tanks in the cap. Or Papa in, you know, up further into the north. The tanks held them back so well. Yeah, such good play from Utopia. And, you know, they've clearly shown that they're the better team here on steps. I felt... Like, oops, after that first round, having such a big advantage, just kind of lapsed in concentration there. Mm. They had, what, th what they had two STBs of Batchat and an AMX CDC against yep. two TVPs on reload. Like, that's such an overmatch, it's so unnecessary. Yep. You can just use a Batchat and a, and, a, and a STB to take down those two TVPs um, because you'll be able to kill one, and then you can move on to the next one. If I was them, maybe just keep the two STBs there, kill the TVPs, send the batch out up north, it's the fastest tank, and get the reset. But instead, they all were just playing this kind of red line sniping, corner camping, peeking kind of moves, which you do when you see in random battles. And uh, yeah, okay, they killed two TVPs, but I mean, the defensive play from the object was exactly the same play mm. Oops tried to do against Utopia when they're on the attack, so they should have guessed it. They didn't. And uh, again, you know, such a good round from Papa, and Utopia bring it three to one. I'm thoroughly impressed with Utopia here. Doesn't seem to matter where they're standing in the rankings right now. Seventh, seventh against tied for first, and they've just come out absolutely flying. Now, Papa from the back lines again, doing some real good work. 2K hit this time. Bearing in mind, he hit 4K earlier. This guy is beasting today's games. Um, a bit of a hard carry coming through. Uh, but yeah, 3-1 is a very decisive scoreline. Um, and I've got to say, at this point, this is a worrying sight for any Oops fans. Yeah, it is. It's, um, you know, kind of a wake-up call. I think they've been in the clouds for a, for a while, but, you know, this is 768. Mm. It depends on what maps you play. You know, like, you can easily be 3-1 up. You can play on a bad map, suddenly you're 3-3, then you go 5-3. It you, know, it, you know, it can spiral very quickly. It's only two rounds per map. Um, now we've got um, Ghost Town coming up. I mean, again, this seems more like a map for Utopia. Mm -hmm. In 754, there was their, their map. They had an almost unbeaten record. Yep. Um, they've won 66% of the, the the rounds this time. Nine rounds played, so they've played quite a few. 66 by Oops as well, but they've only played six rounds. And they have a pretty poor defensive um, setup, whereas okay. Utopia have 100% on the, on the attack. So I think this could be a 1-1. One, one. Could be. Melly as well. The people at home, um, on paper, this is tied for first against seventh. This would be a very clear-cut vote. How are they finding out there? Are they still backing Oops in this, or have they switched their vote at all? Well, they're backing Oops definitely with only a nine percent, um, with only being nine percent ahead. So it's fifty-nine percent for Oops. I must admit, I would have expected more. I agree. Yeah. Regarding the standings on a table, mm. and um, if we see the predicted uh, score lines, it's a lot of five threes, five fours. So people at home knew that it, this is not going to be a walk in the park. So for either teams, because it's a very balanced vote. Utopia, of course, having that big um, fan base, and um, but oops been the better team on paper. Yeah, there's a lot to be discussed, but now your votes have come through, but it's time to look towards the game. I think there's no more chances to vote, are there? It's already no. done. It's done and dusted. We are ready to get into the game, guys and girls. It is going to be a hell of a match. Utopia is still in the head. Three to one. Unreal stuff. But give us your thoughts on Twitter. Use that hashtag WGLEU. Let us know if this is what you expected. Utopia coming out. All guns are blazing. But, Oli, what do we see so far? It looks to me like uh, Oops just going straight up north, which is a bit of a, a gamble for them. They have got an IS-7 there, so maybe they want to go for the cap. But Utopia has as well. So we might have a bit of a Mexican standoff situation. 
like we have seen quite a few times on Ghost Town before, when two teams go in pro into close proximity, they proxy spot each other, and neither makes a move until one of the lighter tanks, like a T-54, um, starts to uh, make oh, their way Bishu. around the map. But uh, You might be in trouble here. Look at this. Yeah, I mean, if they all push around the corner, Bishu, Shuku are dead, for sure. They're not going for it just yet, though. Sealance has just been spotted, too, so I think maybe the plan's going to suddenly fall apart, but... Who's got the upper hand in this sort of, I, I guess, these going for it. stunts? Oh, they are going for it. Here we go. Four tanks staring down. Shook and Bishu are about to get wrecked. Actually, no. Tell a lie. They're staying alive. How is Bishu still alive in this? Shuku's found cover. This is very surprising from Oops. They had a perfect chance. And now look at the response from Utopia. Pushing through. Finally, Bishu goes down. But look at this. Look in the background. Mooka's coming through. Duck of Death is there. But did they overextend? Now they can turn turret. Mooka, what are you doing? He suddenly walked into the line of fire coming out from Oops. Insane was in the background providing such good support there in Conqueror. The Amix 50Bs are now on reload for Oops. So Utopia has a small window to try and stay alive. But look how low they've already gone. Down to 8k whereas Oops are on 10. This could be real messy. And look at this down back and forth. The heavyweight battle certainly underway. See Lenz looking for the pick up here on towards Muka. He gets it and now like flies Utopia are falling down to three. Some real sloppy play coming out from them at this point and they almost have an advantage here but it looks as though at this point it's almost over. McMoney and Daisha just kind of have to sit by the sides and watch this one fall apart. Oops just had their number from the start. Yeah I mean that was such a great push around, a very ballsy push around as well. I don't think a lot of teams would have really wanted to do that and uh, yeah, I mean, oops, just so good on the attack. They've, they've won 100% of the time now, basically. McMoney is only alive in that T54 lightweight. So, so far, no team has managed to beat them here. And you can see why. Decisive, clever, and willing to go for it when they need to. Confidence there as well, and well-kept confidence. I, I absolutely love that. And the response from, well, Utopia was just read like a book. Again, the split was perfect. The covering fire was there. And it took a little bit of time to pick up the likes of Bishu, but in the end, it just happened, you know, and credit to them. It was a very quick game and Oops look like they're not out of this just yet. Mm. They are the team that can bounce back. They've come back from, you know, harder score lines to a degree and picked up some brilliant victories. So I think we're seeing maybe a little bit of their caliber coming through now, be able to refocus on this first round of this map, at least. Yeah, I, I think in that round, I mean, for instance, if, uh, you know, you had the Amex 50B going down, he got permatract behind the corner. That's a fantastic work there from Oops. It's hard to actually permatract a tank, and you know, Ghost Town is that map. Um, I think McMoney maybe should have gone a little bit further forward in that T54 lightweight, just trying to get some early spots on. I like the fact that he was going aggressive at the beginning, but he just he just didn't go quite far enough. And um, I think the AM 50 b got spotted on the cross, and it was just very quick from them, just very mm -hmm. quick reactions, managing to get the shots off. And then Utopia pushed forwards, Probably a little bit careless from them. I feel like you can still come back from a tier 10 deficit. We already saw that in a round on steps, the first round on steps. But pushing into that kind of line when you have Insane in the background and that Conqueror, you know, that that's just not going to happen for you. So I think Oops on the attack, very solid. Now on the defensive side, could be another could be another question. Yeah, I mean, six out of seven, that's, that's really a one-sided round. Yeah, I think that says it all pretty much. Um, Muka had a little bit of time to do some damage, but not a great deal, sadly. And as you said, pretty much everything falling perfectly into the hands of Oops there. And you blink and you miss it in that one. Um, but I, I think, as you said, this is Oops on... Genghis is just win. not good on uh, Ghost Town. It's not his map, is I, it? I don't know if you've seen it, but on uh, Oops' YouTube channel, they put like really cool videos after each map where yeah. they don't put their best parts like every team would. They put their worst parts. Fantastic. Like all their misses... <laughs> The bad plays, and uh, Genghis had a bit of a cracker against, I believe, Penta. I'm not sure you have to correct me on that one. Mm. And he just missed every single shell in that E100. I think it was Genghis, at least. Um, but yeah. Poor guy. Poor guy. Oh, I almost feel bad for him now. Just, But do check out all these teams and the kind of, uh, you know, the social media routes that they have as well, because they are putting out a great deal of content. And also there's a lot of more streamers coming through as well, yeah, not man. just from like the EU region, but, you know, the, the Russian or CIS side of things, you know, a couple of NA teams out there. Yeah. There's a lot of content to be kind of consumed, I guess, these days. Yeah, I mean, at, at the beginning, it was like, what, Circle, it was Quickie Baby, of course. He was 2011. Then you had Circle on a, like, a bit after that, Sir Foch. We had a lot of good European, English-speaking mm. streamers. And I feel only within the last six months or so that a Russian streamer started to play. You know, we had Strike today playing. He's definitely a good guy to check out. You know, fantastic player. Doesn't matter if you don't speak Russian, you can still see, you know, how he plays the game. Um, and yeah, I mean, from from across the board, Kasna, Oops has been streaming, KB has been streaming. It's it's really great to see it. They're definitely entertaining 
shows to watch. And, you know, having a good idea of how the, the team dynamic is and how they like to have a laugh and joke about things yeah. is also also pretty refreshing. Yeah, you should definitely check them out. So, guys, if uh, the show's not on, which there will be a lot of, so maybe not this week, but maybe next week, uh, do check it out. But still, lineups locked in at this point and a bit of a stack from Utopia. Yeah, going for the full FV215B stack. Um, definitely a good one. Well, from Drag Alpha 100 definitely Ghost Town. It's its favorite map. We we pretty much see that the whole time. Mm -hmm. I saw two of them last week. Didn't work out well for the team. I think probably a bit overkill, so one is definitely the way to go. Object 416 tells uh, us immediately that Utopia perhaps want to go for that cap. Very low profile tank. Um, decent hull, uh, turret armor. So he can bounce shells even from tier 10. So I guess Oops knows that Utopia are going north. Yeah, it's it's something we see very often from Utopia. They they seem to run very similar strategies to some degree. Papa is the tank, or the player, shall I say, who often goes for that cap. He's very good at it as well, and they do support him well. This has paid off quite sometimes in a row. Utopia has had a very good defensive, excuse me, a, attacking record as well on this map. Certainly something they've shown some real proficiency in, but whether or not Oops are going to care about that is yet to be found. As Zilan's already going to get caught out here, but trades out the shell, but a lot of damage Artillery. coming through there. Lovely two for one. Yeah, beautiful stuff. I mean, you can't ask for more than that in an artillery piece. And actually, McMoney made a similar play with the T-54 Lightweight last time, but Sealance managed to find the two in. That's a good start here for Oops. Of course, Utopia with those uh, those FEs, they have a lot of HP, more than um, Oops. And, you know, that was a big shell from artillery, but it wasn't massive. So Utopia certainly in this game, and they just want to be get holding these positions, trying to keep U Oops at bay here and uh, maybe even get control of the cap as soon as they see uh, a point of entry. Yeah, Insane's crossed over, so they've lost out on one avenue, or at least another player keeping eye on that cap. And I guess with Papa being in that um, that tank very specifically, they will know what he's going for. And Insane is positioned for this now, looking to maybe hinder some of this if he can. Just kind of clear out the way more than anything at this point. But the cap has started, and this will go on for quite some time. Yeah, for normally. sure. Now, we have seen uh, artillery pieces fail to actually get the decap here mm -hmm. just because of the RNG factor. Um, so they could possibly oh, be not. here, but not this time. HG just finds Papa Pavi and it's three for three. We've had mines, we've had steps, and now we've had Ghost Town all with artillery one shots. This guy's an absolute beast. I don't care that his name is obscenely hard to say. One absolute monster of a player. That's just completely ruined Utopia's plan. How many times do we see them constantly getting that cap going and you think, ah, oh, it's 90 seconds. You know, then it goes down you know, lower and lower and lower and lower and then, hell, they actually have the cap underway. Mm. This has just smashed that apart. Where's the fallback plan? It looks like it's going to go out for some aggression here. Try and find an avenue of attack. They still have a lot of tanks on the board, of course, and a lot to work with, but what a brilliant play from that artillery again. I'd say Oops now definitely have the uh, the upper hand and they have the better positions. You know, Utopia was set up to try and catch Oops as they crossed, to try and get the resets. As you mentioned, HG was such a fantastic shell, not taking and another just shell just coming in. HG now on reload, his third or sixth damage shell here. Fantastic work from the artillery player. And yeah, Utopia push around, do some good damage against somewhere, but Oops just stacked up. <laughs> Shook is, is pretty much broken and beaten by this point a shell of what he once was and oops have barely lost a single thing sure as you said somewhere took a little bit of damage but still not that much and you've got to be thinking in the back of utopia's mind in a couple of seconds there's gonna be another shell coming through and if i get spotted it could be my my uh myself joining the likes of papa or maybe shook at this conjuncture and any spots that come through this is going to be absolutely savage yeah oops just playing it slowly they're kind of playing utopia at their own game just spotting, keeping things alight. And you know, with this map where you have, oh, Fussy Eater though, the, the best, the highest damage dealer actually in the, the league for Oops. And he, it's funny, you know, he's got an interesting story. Of course, he, he played for No Mercy, and, you know, a team which didn't perform well at all in, in the WGL and Fussy Eater was a good player there. But being the top player for Oops, this really shows you how a good team can open uh -oh, things up for you. Three tanks together. Three tanks together. Let's see if he can do it. He's wanting it as well. He's lined it up. Let's see if he takes a shot. They are baiting this one out. They're literally like tasty morsel on the hook here. And again, landing the track, shot. Though. It may not be ideal, but he's, this guy is absolutely unreal. It's so it's such a nice map. I mean, if you can get the right positions, you just funnel the other team in. 
you have a kind of bottleneck situation where you have these big, slower, heavier tanks, like Ruenberg was back in the day, to be yeah. fair, with artillery, and you can just nail them so easily. Long road, symmetrical map, you just need to have find the angles, and uh, looks like Utopia starting to push forwards. They just want blood. They just want that artillery piece down. Can't blame it either. Damnness takes a lot, but that <laughs> artillery is going to be reloaded pretty soon. And oh, the fear, the instant fear. Look at them backing away. They know what's coming. It doesn't land perfectly that time, but my God, it was close. And this is just a game of cat and mouse now. They just want to avoid this guy at all costs. Yeah, it looks like Oops, though, are starting to push on that right side. They want to go against that Waffen Traga. They want to go against Muko. Muka has all six shells remaining, and it will be Utopia to try and scramble back to help these two tanks. Seeing what they can do. Shot goes back and forwards. Insane is hull down, and they are gonna, just going to go forwards, try and take this Waffen Trager down. You can see how much damage it can do, though. Yeah, hell of a lot of damage coming through there, and Oops are actually looking a little low for HP, and they're actually falling in numbers by this point, and I'd be livid. If I was that artillery and watching my team starting to really dwindle here, oops, what is going on? Damnus finds Wicked, but there's four players still standing for Utopia, and they're all together, and they're cleaning up the kills. 4v4 now, Ollie. The HP's not looking great here. It definitely isn't. Unbelievable that oops can actually potentially lose this game still. Three versus, four versus four. Fussy Ito, one shot. Shuku, a one shot. Can Fussy get the reload? Can he get the shell? He needs to land this, and he needs to land it fast. There's no two ways about this. This 1v1 is relatively important here, but around the back lines, there is support on the way, and he gets one done, but it's not enough to pick up anyone else. And now three tanks remain for Oops. Can the artillery come to the rescue again? That's the thing about artillery pieces, you know? They can win you the game, but still, if your individual player skill is not working out well for you, you can still easily, very easily lose it. And uh, Damnus might not be able to scamper away from Desha's barrel. He managed to just get around that corner and unspotted. But still, the cap is underway. And uh, no spots, so no potential really, or very little potential for HD to land shells one on of his shells. But Forbidden gets spotted. Here we go. This could be interesting. Nice work from Lens there. Still ends, excuse me. Shook goes down. 3v3. Cap's still underway, though. Bear in mind, the HP is always going to look a little bit wonky with artillery in play, but Damnus gets caught. He's down to a one shot now, and then some. He's spotted out as well. He's doing good work towards Bishu. He's doing what he can while he's alive. But it's a 2v3, and that cap is still continuing. The shell is ready to be made by the artillery. Silenz goes out for the spot. He set it up. But can we see a shot coming through? He's holding this one back. Maybe trying to do what he can now. Shot comes out again. This guy is playing out of his mind for his team. At this point, it's so hard to be artillery, but Silenz is on the run. And time is going to be a factor. He needs to get the hell out of Dodge. He's actually faster than the FE. He's a lot faster than that T62A. It's a very mobile a very quick tank. Now, Cap is pretty much out of the question in this match. So it's going to be down to Bishu. Can he hit these shells? First one lands. He's down to a one shot now. HD has got about 15 seconds until he's off reload to try and support his T62A of Sealens. This, this is going to be the deciding moment. If Sealens can actually outrun these guys and stay hidden to some degree, it's going to change everything. Two minutes left. Desha is already starting to look towards the artillery and look towards that cap. And again, the spot comes out. Silenz is knowing that his days are numbers here. Cap is going to slowly tick away. Now, shot comes out, Bishu. Oh my God, oh my again. God. Oh, and he bounces. Oh, this Who will have the reload first? Silenz, Silenz will. will have it. But can he get the shot off first? That's the big thing. Oh. oh, Silenz doesn't land the shot perfectly at this point. Bishu now has a chance. No. He takes oh, it. And now it's just down to one man for Oops. 75 seconds on the cap. They know where he is. They've got to know roughly where he is. He hasn't been spotted, but there's only so many ways they can make these shots count. Desha has cover, bearing in mind, especially from that angle. That cap is going to feel like splashed. a lifetime. He can still get splashed. We got about one and a half minutes, so both tanks have to be in this cap very quickly. HD has to land the shell. We'll land the next couple of shells. First one goes out, doesn't <sighs> hit, hits the top of that. Uh, construction site in the middle and you know right now Utopia is so far into this game they have everything they need they just need to keep that FE alive keep the FE in the cap and you know still ends with those two bouncing shots on the top of that FE 215B that's the problem with gun depression and that's the problem with heat ammo against those uh, copulas he is about 13 seconds I don't know if he's gonna have a shell yeah, for this one and this guy put the team on his shoulders and sadly for him, it wasn't enough. I don't think he's going to... Will he have a shell? He's going to go for it. Doesn't get it done in the end. Bishu takes him down. And Utopia finally get it. 
against themselves on match point. But I can't wait to see that guy's damage because it's going to be it's, ridiculous. We thought 4K was a big play. Like, <laughs> it's going to be the biggest damage of the WGL this That's season. Unreal. Like That's it's going to be insane. And you know, as an artillery player, I know you're going to get hate for it, but this is the truth, right? You can have the best game of your life and you can still lose because you're not the guy on the ground. You're not the yep. guy who's making the kills going in. You're not the guy with the HP or the armor. And you can see three tanks of three tanks of oops, four tanks of oops, just pushing into those uh, Waffentrager and the uh, the fe 15 b They just suicided. I mean, yeah, it was a four versus two situation, but then you had Utopia reacting quickly, going back and helping them, and then they killed them immediately. And doesn't matter what HD did there, you can't suicide three or four tanks into that position. Then you had such a close two versus two situation where Sealants had two shells, but they both landed on that bottom part of the <laughs> top of the turret. I mean, that's just insane. 510 average damage, so he basically hit every single one. I mean, ridiculous stuff. Yeah, what a player. I've got to say, you know, this guy is unreal. I... And you've got to be so annoyed at that as well. You're like, I guys, I literally got 5.1k. How did we lose? Like, I would be pissed. I think and we, he's, uh, he hasn't played very much no, this season at all. So I, I did not recognize, recognize his name prior to that moment. Now, for Oops as well, you know, Insane's been um, generally picking up the artillery, if I'm not mistaken. Yep. So, you know, for someone to replace him, and Insane's been really good as well. Mm -hmm. I think it says enough about what this guy can achieve, but it wasn't enough to close out the game. And that's put Utopia on match point now. It's it's four to two. Yeah, it's ridiculous. I mean, these are what we've had two rounds here where Oops have one shot a tank on the enemy team and still managed to lose the game. I mean, unbelievable stuff. It just shouldn't happen. No. Uh, we're moving on to Himmelsdorf, our next map. Um, four to one, as you said, four to two even to mm. Utopia. They are on match point. So it's getting close. I mean, Oops still in this game, barely. But I mean, if I was them, I would be morally um, uh, just completely the destroyed. Yeah, th there's only so much you can recover from, yeah. right? It's like, okay, until that round, I'd say, when you see one player of your team hit over 5K, do everything you could and you still lose out. Like, it was close, don't get me wrong. But then again, this is once again coming down to the fact that Oops is a top tier team, or they should be, they should be performing far greater than this, at least in my eyes, and I'm going to be very critical of them because they are in the top two. But now, going on to Himmelsdorf, where does Utopia stand in this one? How how have they been performing on this thus far? Not great. They have about 40% win ratio and um, Oops have about an 87%, so almost 90% win ratio. So technically this is their you know, their map they can easily win. Himmelsdorf attack defense still slightly biased towards the defensive side, so Utopia starting on the defense technically have the advantage in that respect and 75% they've won the defensive side. They just haven't won any attacking rounds. That's what's balanced it out. So, I mean, with that lineup, with the T110E3, with the Waffen Traga, this should be their game. There's a hell of a lot of shoulds, which is terrifying for me at this point. Um, I don't know what to say here, because, as you said, this should be Oops's game, but they're going to be super tilty. It doesn't matter who you are, it doesn't matter how, you know, veteran you are to this game. You lose games like that, you're going to be pretty pissed overall. Now, Let's see if they can recover. They, they have to do something here. Honey's kind of got a couple of spots here. Good damage coming through straight away to Ultimate Money. Set up by Insane there. So already just chipping away at Utopia. Yeah, good start again for Oops. Um, just uh, taking McMoney down. He couldn't go forwards. He's still spotted and Duck of Death trying to land a shell. And uh, yeah, I mean, if we see a similar round here from, uh, from Papa, mm. like we saw in that previous round where he Perma tracked at T1 uh, that's FE215B, so he couldn't go around the corner on Ghost Town, basically cancelling it out. It's going to be fantastic. And, you know, I have to say this like, I've seen so many rounds on, on Ghost Town and, and other maps where the FE215B, it's been completely useless because if you have that skill of hitting the front track, which stops it from going around the corner, you can just continue hitting that front track and doing damage, and it's useless because the turret's on the back of the tank. So, Sure, it might be you know very good DPM tank with decent armor, a lot of HP, but if you don't take that into a, into the account, like for instance, Casa Crew didn't last week against Oops, and now Oops against Utopia mm. could be a problem. But standard tactic from the start here from Utopia, one to three line push, as Oops maybe setting up setting up a trap with the tanks next to the church in, in the south. Yeah, hello, those FVs stacked up down there. I think it's Duck of Death. 
Trinidad down there and see Lens as well. There's one other, other off to the side, which is Damna. So thank you again for the beautiful illustrations. It looks like you've written, uh, wrote, or, you know, um, displayed Traff. Um, missing out on that P. Kind of, kind of messed up the P I'm not P sure what that. Traff means. I'm sure this means something. Maybe. Don't Urban Dictionary that, Oliver. Please. <laughs> <laughs> Before I get fired for something I'm completely unaware of. Um, but still, this is Oops's final real throw at this, you know. I, I've got to say, they've got to get the damage going. Teacher's retirement too much. allowance is fun, board. Sweet. There we go. Perfectly fine. Get my retirement going. I'm old anyway, so that'll be happening soon. I'm, I'm I'll very excited. I'll be the excited. teacher of tanks. <laughs> Alrighty, so Muka. Gonna have a little bit of a challenge from Insane at some point, but just... I, I do like the way Oops do very slowly and very methodically take over some aggressive positioning at this point. It is quite nice to see them infiltrating throughout this map and noting where the pressure is going to be. And there's a lot of tanks actually moving in the south here. I mean, AMX 50B is actually might... They might be walking into this trap here. It looks like they are. I mean, the standard tactic on this map is to send tanks around south. Oh, God. When you see... When you have a spot on that eight line. And that's exactly what uh, Utopia done. But they start to back out, so they're definitely aware that that could Bishu, be a potential no. tactic no, from Utopia. Please, Bishu, I beg of you to not do this. I'd love to see Bishu right now. If he keeps going, I am going to cry. Bishu, stop it. Literally, see that little line? Don't cross it. No, they've got to worry why this hasn't been destroyed. Okay, they're, they're literally walking into a trap. This is... Um, this could be a disaster. They look cautious, that's the thing. Like They should be aware that there's something going on here. And she looks like, screw that, I don't want to go around. There we go, okay, now they spread everything. Bishu backs the hell out and... Suddenly they realize what's up here, but the trap's kind of been sprung. A little bit of damage is going to come through towards Utopia from this. Yeah, Bishu's going to get absolutely punished. He might even fall here as he tries to reverse out of that situation. Oh, no, Bishu, we told you to not go there. Why did you not listen to our cries as the trap has been sprung? And now Utopia are on the push. You can see them chasing down the I-7 and the FE as well. That's Wicked and Shook on the run. Now, Bishu did make it out of there alive, but by this point, they're looking a little bit more broken. They are looking broken. They've taken so much damage in that uh, nice little trap. I think Silence just uh, tried to aim a shell a little bit there to try and catch Wicked around the corner. He receives one in from behind, not exactly sure. I think that was from the hill or the, or the side from the IS-7, a low damage roll. And right now, I mean, this is going all the way of Oops. They're, they're doing so well in these exchanges. Really yeah. nice to find them. Actually uh, keep Utopia at bay, keep them chasing. And Mooker in the middle, it does a good shell against Silence. T110 is just an absolute beast. Needs to be careful though, starting to come out numbers and Papa. That tank is phenomenal, but if he doesn't have the chance to utilize it, it'd be a bit of a shame. And it looks like they're gonna. Are they really pushing through the center of this map? There is that I7 off towards the side, and this is a little bit curious of a play from Utopia. They're getting some damage done, but they're certainly trailing. 9k to 7, but here we go. Damnus gets a lot from Bishu. They're gonna be kicking themselves for not taking him down, but Fossey takes a little on the cross to try and cross Bishu out, at least as Damnus does find Wicked. And Oops are chipping away at Utopia now. This should be Oops's game. They're yet to lose a player. Yeah, I mean, they had to take the T110 E3 down because they knew Bishu wouldn't be able to do that much damage if he is allowed to live. But Bishu's now pretty much a one-shot there. 466, maybe a two-shot. And the exchanges are going very well for Oops. They're 2,000 hit points ahead. Fussy Eaters trying to outplay Bishu. Could be a problem. And there we go. Fussy and Damnus both finding kills now. Has taken the count down to four for Utopia. Looking a little worse for where Shook as well on the receiving end. And even though Oops are low, no one is closing this off. Papa is going to have a good chance, but I don't think he's got enough shells to do this much damage. They need to start landing these, and Papa is going to have the perfect chance to. He needs to land these, though, back to back, and Damnus finds Shook. He's already under fire, and it looks like Oops have done enough to probably turn this one back into their hands, at least get them back into the game at three to four as Papa backs away, and he knows maybe he waited a little too late here. Yeah, he's uh, not very good on the old reload. I mean, 50 seconds, basically, basically a minute reload on that. That Waffen Trag Alpha E100. Six tanks alive for Oops on this map. You can see their supremacy is reigning supreme. And uh, Mukha just trying to stay alive in that T110 E3. He was just shooting across the corner. I actually thought he went down earlier on, but it was an FE 215B. And Honey just keeping Muck Money at Bayo. I thought Muck Money would go for the hill maybe and try and shoot down, but he obviously didn't. So, I mean, Oops can just clean up now. They don't have to cap. They don't have to worry about anything. Yep. Just find these two last tanks. And they know that, but Money's. Spotted here. Honey could basically commit to this as Mook is about to be crossed out as well. You know, the crossfire is there for Utopia, but it's not going to get anything done as there we go. Mooka falls and Honey misses the shot, but not for long. There we go. Finally closes the deal and oops, get themselves back in the game. 
a s very small step on the ladder of getting back into the game, bearing in mind. And mm. It wasn't the cleanest of games. I guess Utopia kind of walked into the trap down the south. The amount of damage they received was just almost too much to recover from. Yeah, I mean, they had Bishu down to about 700, 800 HP. Mm. The FE also received a few shells. So, I mean, they did receive a lot, but we've seen, you know, already Oops just receiving so much damage and somehow still uh, doing so much damage, somehow still managing to lose the round. So they still kept things cool and logical, and it's good to see they can recover from, from poor rounds in uh, poor previous rounds. Mm. Um, but yeah, I mean, they went for that one three line push. They they succeeded very well. They went for an old Wombat style, pushing around the corner and just exchanged it against the Waffen Dragas, exchanged against the FET 15Bs with the overmatch. Mukka was in the middle of that T1 10 E3. It would have been great if he was on that one to three line in a straight line, but he wasn't there. And uh, Honey was keeping McMoney at bay. So yeah, I mean, good round for Noops. Um, now they go on to the easier side, theoretically. Utopia, not particularly a good attacking team. So maybe it's going to be another one here for Oops. We have to see. Yeah, no, I think somewhere went a little bit under my radar at that point. Um, hitting almost 3k damage on this map. Nicely done by him. Certainly towards the higher end here. of people doing the work. But as said, one more throw at this Utopia to get the clean win now. This is pretty much their last chance at it before he goes into a tiebreaker. Do we know what the tiebreaker map will be? Uh, no, I'm not sure who what it will be, but um, we can find that out. Yeah, we'll have a little look if it does go that far, of course. Um, at, the, at present... Um, Utopia are, as said, 4-3 up. And I believe we might know what it is now. Yeah, it's Steps. It so is going to be Steps. Steps okay. today, Mines tomorrow, okay. and Cliff. So, yeah, we got, good, we got a good one. And, of course, uh, Steps was a pretty close map going back onto that one. Yep. It's interesting. I mean, tiebreak is always interesting because, you know, you have to kind of play something you haven't trained a lot of the time. You know, mm -hmm. only train two rounds. You don't really expect to go to tiebreaker. Yeah, so it will be uh, interesting to see how that one goes, if the teams have anything left up their sleeves to bring out here as we do get ready for that final round coming in. It's going to be on Himmelsdorf. Well, if I say final round, if Utopia wins it. Now, they've looked at, you know, a little bit uh, sloppy compared to those other rounds that are coming through. Can they finally pick up a very, very well-needed victory? Bearing in mind, Ollie, what are your predictions here? What do you reckon? Um... I think Utopia could do it. I think um, you believe. I, d I do believe Utopia can win this one. Um, looking in their lineup, it's very aggressive. Um, mm -hmm. I mean, if they could connect just some of these shells, have a good amount of aggression here. I don't see how um, Oops can slow them down. But of course, Oops, they've gone for something lighter. They've gone for a bat chat. They've gone for an RU two five one. So I mean, it's going to be a lot up to them. But with that FE two one FE two. 15B183. Real easy couple, name to say. Couple of one of those shell, couple one of those shells will uh, will really do a lot of damage. Well, can Muka find his place here? That's the next big thing in mind. Honey speeding across as Oops take presence on that western side. Now it does seem as though the MX50Bs are looking for this one. Honey gets spotted out. Now Papa, Wicked, and. DAB are going to know what's up here, and they're going to make a quick move towards this, but the covering fire is outstanding. Wicked gets decimated, sent packing on almost 1k HP. That is a huge loss, as Honey's cover was perfect from the Oops boys. Yeah, very nice uh, set play there from Oops, just keeping those tanks in the background, making sure that they can get the shots against whoever pushes against Honey. I mean, it's a classic bait. It's a Honey trap, basically, um, and they fell straight into it. I mean, Winnie the Pooh is what, I, is what comes up from here, from Utopia. Uh, but where is their Tigger? Can they have friends to help them win this match? I mean, Tigger got uh, Winnie the Pooh out of so many sticky situations. It's unbelievable, and I feel like Utopia needs that as well. Silence receives a shell there down I the one I wish you could line. see me right now just <laughs> staring at Ollie. Like, don't get me wrong. I have a lot of those death stares. You do, especially when Winnie the Pooh kind of, you know, analogies come <laughs> out. And great. Tigger, who was it? Piglet in Piglet. there as well? Eel? I actually Piglet? called my uh, my first cat Tigger. Well, the kittens on my first cat. Tigger. Pretty cute. Because it was all stripy and tiger. Oh, it was actually like... Yeah. Yeah. Alrighty, back into the game, though. Uh, what are the options left with Utopia? Uh, Wicked took a lot of damage to start with, but is that enough that they you know, can't get back from? Is it, you know, what sort of blow is that to Utopia here? It's not a massive blow. I mean, again, we've seen so many rounds on 768 where teams have come back regardless. And actually, somewhere is spotted there. Mukka, he's got 230 millimeters of penetration with that... Hesh ammo, can he do anything with it? Right, he start, oh, he's going to need to, and nothing comes through from that. Somewhere stays alive, and actually, uh, Muka takes two shells, one from somewhere, and I think that was from Silent in the background as well. So, 
Not the best debut in that tank on this map, at least thus far. It looks like Utopia just running out of options. Oh, Honey just punishes him there. Yeah, I mean, Utopia just being battered back right now. Um, Mooka, I think it's going to be pretty hard for him to actually penetrate anything. I mean, he could he can penetrate the Amex 50Bs, potentially the FE215Bs, but from the front, 230 millimeters might struggle. So he's going to have to use APCR, which is a lot of penetration, but only 1,150 damage, as opposed to well, that 1.7k. So it's a very it's a very hard tank to play in. If it does work out for you, fair enough. But it's always a gamble. I mean, it's basically an artillery piece and super slow aiming downtime, not particularly good accuracy. But yeah, I mean, looking at this from Utopia, mm. basically cemented in that eight line because of the positions and oops around those corners. Marco can't really peek on the hill because you know he's just going to get penetrated in the turret, no problems at all. But they have kind of. Le left that uh, northern area exposed. So if Utopia puts McMoney in the cap, that's going to force a move for noobs. And it does seem as though they are putting the tanks up that zero line to maybe join in. McMoney's falling back, though. So we are seeing a move coming out from these guys. And it does look like it is relatively hinged towards the north here. The I-7 going to show its hand, maybe trying to distract from the fact that Wicked and Papa have moved on from that spot. Yeah, no one really showing the full game plan here for Utopia, as it does seem as though it is looking towards that northeast side and maybe working down to that second cap. Yeah, so they're just pushing forwards. Mucka, I think Insane just received a shell from... I'm not sure exactly who that, maybe from from Mucka there, just actually landing a, a nice little splash damage. And Papa's actually found a nice angle on Tahani, the 113, a decent hull down tank. and. Uh, Honey well, should be able to stay safe though, he should just be about to have the angle, it maybe be a, a pixel shot from Papa, so it's going to take a while for him to take him down. And you can see actually using HE ammo to splash him, good stuff. Yeah, nice intuition from Papa there. Trying to remove Honey from that rather sticky little spot he's got himself into. While that happens, oops, just have to watch on. Can they find a way back through this? It looks like the Batchat's going walkabouts in the south. We are seeing counter movers coming out on that zero line as well from McMoney. So both kind of doing a relatively similar thing, but McMoney may be looking towards that cap as Dear. They're going to be going for something here. Devil, excuse me, as Harley takes another shot here. One more could do the job at this point. So, like, last, there we go. Finally, Papa picks him up. Now, there's the advantage. HP still not ideal for Utopia, but they do have a tank in pocket. Yeah, I mean... That's a that's a good that's good stuff from Utopia. Finally, I mean, you can see the factor of that 440 damage shell, the the bigger shell, and Insane actually receives some. So the HP is now pretty much in balance. I think the worst thing Utopia can do now is just peak unnecessarily. Unnecessarily, and as you guys know, when you're peaking against a hard down IS-7, you basically have no chance. There's a small small chance that you can penetrate the top of that turret on the IS-7 where it has basically no armor. But it's, it's so hard to hit, and the I-7 is going to uh, land a, a big old 490 damage shell into you at the same time. So, Oops have kind of defaulted back to the more normal defensive positions on this map as uh, Utopia push off that hill. Yeah, and they got up there unspotted as well. You saw McMoney going back and forward, noting he wasn't getting spotted. Now, look at those MX-50Bs just piling through. you still got Mooka holding this angle. Insane's going to find it hard to peek onto this. Now, to be fair to Oops, they are already in the north. Now... Devil has to be a little bit cautious here, otherwise that five line will become available for the rotators to come around from that IS-7, for example, and that bat chat towards the south. So they need to be a little bit ready for this. Damnus is joining him, so the outnumber, the outmatch, or the overmatch, is going to be there. Devil has to be very cautious. Yeah, Devil's just uh, having a bit of a cat and mouse against somewhere, but the resources and the forces of Utopia are starting to uh, stack up here. There's no tank in A6, A7, normally you see an IS-4 there. So this is this is good from Utopia. They have the cap underway. Now that's gonna force hundred percent oops to push onto Wicked, but Money and Papa Pavian. They have the FE on the hill, the 183. So they have good support there. They have Papa Pavian there, they got McMoney and Wicked, of course. And they've also got an AMX50B in the background. So they've got a lot of angles, but Fussy Eater's also found one from behind. Yeah, he was on a really long rotate here. Now Shook has found that, but lovely little setup here in Dable. 
might have a chance at this, but Fossey Eater's got so many shells to put out by this point. It's going to allow somewhere to come in there, but here comes the push as well. Everything's starting to fall to pieces for Utopia unless they win out in these battles, but no, Dark of Death finds one, and suddenly Utopia looking like they're in a little bit of a worse for wear situation unless they can start backing up these kills. Duck of Death again coming up with the goods, but Fossey is low. The HP is still very equal here, but the kills are certainly in favor to Oops. Can Papa, can Bishu, can Shook, and Mooka do anything to stop this? Somewhere's just been such a beast in this game that IS7 staying alive despite having three tanks surrounding him. The FE on the hill has not been particularly useful so far. There's 50 pieces of Shuku and Bishu still on reload, trying to get into the middle. And Mucker, just spotted, is going to be trying to uh, do as much damage as he can at this point in time. And he has no targets to focus on. They're all moving in for the kill. Utopia had to back away, and now we're going to see a little bit of a crossfire set up. Good damage coming through finally, but nothing to take these tanks down until then. Shook gets down Damnus, down to a 4v4. Still relatively close. 2.5 for Oops, 2.5 for Utopia. But Shook on reload. Bishu has three. Papa is just knowing that he's going to be broken apart. And again, Mooka is not in this fight. And tank by tank, Utopia are falling. Shook and Mooka have to do some heavy lifting here. And oh, Mooka does do the damage, but a little bit of a waste. Almost having to take down that tank there. Now these three tanks focusing down Shook. It's just Mooka alive. If somewhere didn't hit that shell, it could have been a different game. Two versus three with, with a one-shot tank like Mooka. It could easily uh, swing back into Utopia's favor. But now, I mean... Duck of Death goes a one shot um, for this FE if he lands his hash, if he le if he loads hash. Otherwise, uh, you know he's going to take two shots. So I mean, this is so far in favor of, of Oops. They just need to hold the angles there under the fence. There's only only one minute and 28 seconds left on this clock for Oops to hold fast. Brilliant stuff from the Mooka knows that this is almost an impossible task. It's almost time to start considering that possible final map here, and they're going to be kicking themselves for this one. Does spot them both. You can actually splash them to death. That's the funny, th funny thing. If someone and Silence were next to each other, that'd be a terrifying little combo. But I just don't think Mooka's got the you know any room to work on this. As Oops, setting up well for each other, not allowing anyone a, a clean peek. Because Mooka desperately looking for that. But so much time between shells here. He's got 45 seconds left. It's going to come down to well, absolutely nothing by this point. I feel like if we're going to learn anything from this match is that one shots is not the way forward. It's more about having consistent damage and I feel like Mucker's, you know, the team captain of Utopia is not being particularly relevant. He's going to have a 25 seconds reload now and that's going to give plenty of time for Oops to uh, kill him. And I think somewhere certainly deserves this while he's had a very good game and we are tied up at 4-4. Four, four. We are going to be going into that decider map once the teams are prepared but we need to talk through that one because it looked like the downfall of Utopia pretty much from start to finish. A couple of poor choices and it seemed to just crumble. Now, the trap happened on the first side. Yeah. Okay, that's a little unfortunate. But this time, they found a way in, but they just didn't seem to be able to work it out. No, I mean, they, they came back into the game because they did some good peaks. They did some good damage. Yeah. Um, but then they were pushing forwards. They had the right idea for sure. I mean, put money in the cap, put the, uh, the I-7 there in the background, have a good setup there. But I feel like... Um, you know, with Mucker on the hill and the FE215B, when Oops pushed around the corner, yeah. sure, they cancelled one tank out, but he had to basically cancel a whole another tank out to be useful. Mm. We've seen we've seen tanks on that on that position. For instance, the Batchat, the 50B working out very well for teams. 5100 and 758, uh, 754 worked out very well as well. But this, this FE, when you have that one shell to make all the difference, it's it's super hard and and oops managed to keep enough hp alive summer did a really good job in the is7 and uh, i felt like utopia just struggled consistently trying to do as much as he can and i hate to say it but mucker you know that's just the wrong that's the wrong uh, choice of tank and again as i said before in the match one shots aren't everything and you know we that's proven by this match time and time again yeah it's becoming a bit of an issue here throughout i guess um in several matchups uh, until this point, but certainly highlighted in that final one there. On I guess off. Wicked, I mean, he didn't do very much either. He no. was he was actually on, I think, on half HP. Well, he was the one who got caught out initially. He, yeah, he got destroyed initially. And yeah, yeah I mean, Mooka, I think two shells that last already the closing minutes of the game where it's basically a loss already. So we can take like 600 HP away from that. I don't think he pulled his weight in that one. No, it's only a couple of questionable performances there coming through for these boys, and hopefully they can kind of pull themselves back together for Utopia. And for Oops, it's it's comeback time. You know, they they were staring down the barrel of a very loaded gun, 
um, going into Himmelsdorf and they turned it around. So showing their, their class and resilience by this point. And Melly, uh, I've got to ask you as well, the people at home were only giving them, what, a 6% buffer. <laughs> But now I can imagine they're like, OK, maybe we should have given them a bit more credit. Well, it seems like that Oops is climbing back up. I mean, uh, nobody expect expected Ut Utopia yeah. to uh, rush ahead that much as they did uh, when, it, uh, when the standing was 3-1. Mm. But uh, we already, that, that's, that's a well-known uh, issue from Utopia's side, if I remember right. We had that the past seasons as well, <laughs> running ahead, being one of the be clearly better teams, getting those rounds and suddenly nothing. Yep. I, I really don't know. As said, the vote ended 56% people at home. You have decided and you also said that it's either going to be a 5-3 or we're going to see the deciding map, which was correct. But let's see how it goes, I guess. If you have anything left to say regarding that matchup, you're very welcome to use the hashtag WGLEU over at Twitter to make sure that we can see your tweets and also uh, I mean, you're vocal enough in Twitch chat, so just keep on chatting and whatever. I'm reading everything, by the way. And uh, yes, the next vote is, of course, online. So head over to our Facebook page, facebook.com slash WGLEU, and get yourselves involved for the next matchup to maybe higher chances of actually winning. Sounds good to me. So guys, of course, we do have those other two games coming up after this matchup, but there's still one more round to go. We are tied at four rounds to four. And I'm wondering if we know yet who's going to be on attack and who's defense. And I do believe we've just heard that Oops will be on attack. So not sure how this is going to play out because so many factors came in last time, throwing our minds back to steps. Who's got this one in the bag here? Because, you know, Oops yeah. are on the comeback trail. Utopia played well on this map, but who's got it just enough? Well, obviously, Utopia won both rounds on steps last time. So, I mean, if we're going to go by that, mm. uh, it would be Oops, uh, Utopia's game. But also, we've seen a situation before where a team has lost both times on 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 a map, uh, very close, like this has been, and then they managed to put together what they actually had in mind in the first place and, and, pull and then off. pull it off and then win the round. Like, they've had practice, they've warmed up, and they managed to win. Now, Oops, interestingly enough, they pick the, the attacking side, which is always a bit of a risk, but they know the statistics. They know 65% of the time the attacker wins. So, I mean, they, they're definitely playing the numbers game here. And I felt like Oops had a, a better round on the attack than it did the defense. Yeah. Um, so, I mean, Oops is definitely on the comeback trail. I feel like Utopia's been the better team since Mines. So it would be a shame to see Utopia lose this. I feel like we've really been struggling and, um, you know, just really disjointed on Himmelsdorf. It cost them two rounds and, you know, all that work they put up, put up uh, on steps. But I guess as well... Utopia, more of an experienced team. They've been in the situation before. Oops hasn't. That can definitely play dividends as well. See, I'm, I'm wondering if, if, if I was the likes of Oops here, they, they worked out how the boost comes in. I'm wondering if they're going to work out the other positions that we consistently see from Utopia, and if Utopia will actually go for the same thing at this it point. It looks like the both teams have gone so, for the same lineups. Okay, so mirrored lineups here. That is going to be Consid a big no, 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 not mirrored lineups. Oh, the same, same as lineups before. as before. Right, okay, so <clears throat> here we go. Eyes into this one. We've got the artillery coming out that was absolutely imperative before. It called the boost coming into play, but surely Utopia will not go for that. That would be a, an, an insane thing here if they do. It's going to be a mind game, oh, right? Oh, God, it, it would be like, you know, a goldfish. It's just a mind game. No way. Because delay, H please delay this. I, I guarantee Oops will know that Utopia aren't going to go for it straight away. So, I mean, it's like poker right now. Do we go for it straight away? Do the double bluff? They have gone for HD. Lovely. Goes to shot now. Utopia will surge forwards as about 20 seconds left until HD gets the reload. Really nicely played it by Utopia there. Just touching the timing by, what, 30 odd seconds, maybe less as to putting Papa. I think HD will have two hill. shells, though. Maybe. He won't go for a shot. No, he won't. No, he's just out of time on that one. He might go back for it, though. I might see another one come into play there. Not going to find anyone, I can imagine. No. Job's done. Great timing from Utopia. Right in the middle of where he was going to make the shot and where the second became available. But while that happens, where is the rest of Oops here? It'll be interesting if... I mean, it was super interesting play. I mean, if Oops had just pushed in, expecting Utopia to actually go for the boost, I mean, they could have just won the game straight out there. But like, then again, but money did seem to be moving around just to try and keep tabs on that in that 1390 yeah, as well. Sure. So I'm not saying you could have stopped it, but at least they know it would have been coming. But then again, this this is a different approach here actually coming out. I've got to say it from Utopia, but money's not in the same spot. 
they're, they're relatively changed up, which is good to see. They're not just rinsing and repeating. They're being aware of what their, maybe their downfalls were, what the obvious points were, and they're actually trying to find a new way of doing this. Yeah, for sure. They're, they are switching up and they are thinking about what they want to do, and that's fantastic. And it looks like, oops, they've gone forwards with all their tanks. They've got HD in the background, so, I mean, this is going to be about trying to keep their tanks towards that cap and as you hark your minds back to what happened last time on this map when oops were attacking they <laughs> basically chucked all their tanks in the cap and they mi fail miserably even though they managed to one shot an stb1 now will they do that again i'm not sure silence getting pushed up they're more hull down oriented object 140 with okay gun depression basically going to stop the uh the rotate Mm. Farsi Eater up and towards that western side. I think those three will go there as well. And I mean, this is so hard to, to predict. HD's continuing to blast those shells out from the uh, artillery pieces. And I mean, I feel like Steps is that map where you have to you have to get some sort of peak advantage. You know, you have to have done some damage at the beginning, or you have to have started capping and put some pressure on the other team if you want to win that later engagement as the attackers. Yeah, so as Oops in red on the attack are looking for this, I've got to point out as well, the artillery did clear the bush that was consistently played by Mamani, so they were very aware of what was brought last time. This time looking for a little bit of a different shot, and Bishu just about avoiding that one, not by much as well, as Oops checking off what they kind of got called out with before to a degree. Now can they turn the tides? Very well, Papa is still in a very pivotal position. We've seen him doing so well from this, and Fussy... Go and walk about, noting, okay, I'm not being spotted by this point. I'm still in a little bit of cover here. Wonder if he's going to crest and try and look for something and keep his eyes across, possibly. But this is almost what we expected to a degree before, um, if they knew the whole plan. You know, moving up towards the north, taking it over, maybe making a play over towards that eastern side. But so far, Utopia on the defending side in blue are just locking it down. Yeah, they are. They don't have to do anything right now. Um, Oops has to make all the moves. And as I said before, I think they want to be doing some damage. So we got another 6 minutes and 13 seconds for HD to try and land a few shells. Fast Eaters trying to spot in A4, A5. They're all trying to make it work for them and maybe even just blind shot up to where Papa -pa -pa Pavian is in the A9 area, the one who was boosted up. But Oops are not aware that Papa was actually boosted. That's one thing you have to keep in mind. As uh, Fast Eater starts the cap and Insane receives a shell. Okay. So... Cap has started, but Money can go to his tried and tested position if he fancies it. No shells landing just yet towards Fussy, but the spot will come out soon enough. Insane's up there though, so a lot more support in the north this time towards the cap in comparison to before, but we are seeing the artillery actually coming through. I think Mooka might have just been mm -hmm. caught by that one as well, so they might start having an idea as to what's going on here, and a lot of damage starting to pile through towards Utopia. Not massive amounts, but enough that's keeping them at bay and playing relatively humble, but Money is going to be going to that same spot to a degree. And look across and try and find Fussy at this point, but... He's just going to suicide. Oh, he's just going for it. All right. Anyone going to punish? No. Mumani's still alive they all and have didn't to receive move. any That's damage. The they all have to move and then uh, just to stay alive. So the ones in the cap can't do any damage. Has to be on everyone else. But look at the exchanges going so well for Oops right now. They're shooting. They're, lit, they're hitting their shots and McMoney gets punished. And uh, Desha also got punished once again. Now he's down to 474. That's a one shot for the uh, Lorraine. Let's see if he can hit these shots and... HDG was actually not having the biggest games yet. Utopia kind of playing around it, I guess, uh, which is impressive to see, but he's not had the biggest impact in comparison to those previous rounds. Obviously not holding not him accountable. Exactly. I'm not holding him accountable to like the, uh, you know, the 4K breaking five at some points, but HDG, what can you do here? The caps start up again, maybe waiting out, see if any spots come through. Going to make the shot now. Oh, and again, just not landing it. But still... Outside of that, Oops are doing good damage. Right, so Oops can just sit in the cap again and do exactly what they did last time, you know, a rinse and repeat situation. But McMoney is still a three shot, so a two shot potentially. So he's just going to be able to do the same thing again. So this next exchange is going to be super piv pivotal. Will Utopia be able to do a, a, such a critical amount of damage and keep McMoney alive? Or will Oops do the same when uh, the rest of Utopia peak? Oh, money. There we go. Finally gets caught out and punished by the supporting tanks to those in the cap. But again, we're seeing the same tanks head towards the south to get these cross shots on. And it's paying off perfectly. Damnus and Fussy are down to pretty much nothing. Cover is now provided. Fussy needs to cover off two angles, though. That's not going to be too easy. Silen's going to try and wiggle his way in, provide a little bit of a box for 
fussy to work through, but the cap's still underway, and this is not looking too pretty here for Oops. They're starting to dwindle a little. Yeah, for sure. I mean, I actually am pretty surprised that Dumnus and Fussy Eater didn't just run out of that cap as soon as they got spotted. And they actually stayed in there. And to be honest, I mean, Utopia, almost 1,500, 2,000 hit points, head insane also down. They could just push forwards and get the resets here. Only two tanks in the cap. See how long that cap's going to go on for. 15 seconds now, 14. And Shook's just a sitting target right now. He can't do anything. He's just going to have to chill this one out and wait it. Team get himself back up and running. And there we go. 10 seconds now remaining. The cap gets sorted out. Desha comes up with the goods finally. And Silenz has got cover, but just not in that much time. I mean, Desha is almost uh, killed by HDGL. And I mean, right now, it's still 1,200, 1,800 HP. So it's still a potential. But of course, last time, Oops just stayed in the cap. They got punished time and time again. But Geng Geng's just finds Bishu as a one shot. So Oops just staying fast and wanted to push onto, uh, onto Mooker. And yeah, HD found the shell so he can go down. Good little setup there. Now, Duck Duck. Oh, no. What are you doing? He, he's left he a chance now. And yeah, he has absolutely screwed the pooch. And Papa Pavian's going to punish that. Bearing in mind, Utopia are holding the numbers here. And HDG is doing as much as he can, but it's not enough. And Genghis getting caught out. This guy's having an absolute mare of a day. One more shell for Wicked is going to do the job as it's down to two tanks for Oops. And in the final throws here, it looks as though we are going to see Utopia actually picking this game up. Yeah, it's going to be game over here. There's no way Silence and uh, HD can actually win this game. HD's had another complete blast, a dream of a game, but just not enough for his team to win out. We saw Ducker Death screwing that one up there in the TVP. If he had found Mucker, he could have uh, helped his team out. But even if I think he survived, it would have been super hard for Oops to win that one. They just received too much in the cap once again. HDG. There was a time to give your team a little bit of grief. It's certainly right about now, and I would not blame you for a second. Now, he's going to buy the time, but bearing in mind, Oops are on the attack, so I doubt it matters. He's repositioned. He's looking to do some more damage. Why not, I guess? This guy's been a monster so far. Lines up. <laughs> he actually hits the shot as well, but it's to no avail, and Utopia are the winners against Oops. Seventh wins against joint first. This is the WGL and this is the sort of standard that just blows my mind sometimes that the teams, no matter what rank they are or you know, placing they are, they can still do so much damage. Yeah, I felt like that was really two sides of the magnet same side of the magnet trying to go against each other and just being repelled and you know just your analogies are horrific just today. trying to hit each other. I mean it was it did feel like that when you put two magnets together the wrong side the same side, they just Are you just push. like reliving your childhood? You've gone from Winnie the Pooh they to just, like, you know... Magnets, yeah. Year 10 much science. Yeah, but do you, I, I don't know how to say it. Repelling I mean, each other. Yeah, they're just repelling each other, you know. It's just... Uh, it was a weird game to watch. And it was. It was super, super weird. We had some great plays from especially artillery pieces. Mm. I mean, this is the first time... Well, one of the first times where artillery has had such a big role every single round apart from on Himmelsdorf. Yep. But I mean, we're out on mines. That was the close one. Then we went to uh, steps, I believe it was. Yep. Um, and then that was uh, three one towards um, uh, Utopia. Then Himmelsdorf. It was f uh, f four four. Yeah. Ghost Town. It was four four even. Yeah, I think so. And then we went. No, it was what three one. Yep. After steps, so we went on Ghost Town, uh, where Oops came back, I believe, three three. Yep. And yeah, then, they did. And then, then we went on to Himmelsdorf, where both won a round. And then we went steps where we saw the tiebreaker and um, we saw Oops I don't actually win. Know. Something like Think, that. But I mean, it was back hard. and forth. Like, we never had a map where we had a map where every single time we had a map where one team won both rounds. Like, that's yeah. insane. It was very, very close between these two. Um, I've got to say. And <laughs> I mean, Sealand's so wow. beautiful. He went under the radar as well, to be fair. Yeah, he did. I mean, a, a French guy. Um, we haven't seen him a lot so far, but he's been an absolute beast in this. Uh, that's This is the best of nine statistics. So all the rounds put together, who's done best? And Silence comes out on top. Mukamana, Mucker, despite his uh, questionable maybe choices on questionable Himmelsdorf. Before, yeah, yeah he, did, he did a really good job for his team as a captain. Fantastic work. And, you know, Fussy, maybe not so surprising there in second for Oops. Yeah, actually, um, it is quite nice to see the overall kind of account of the damage dealt because you know you do find consistent players who will consistently hit you know two to three k but mm -hmm. then obviously if someone really shines by getting these massive amounts you don't really notice it as much so it's good to see these guys being consistent and utopia a little bit further down there
Yeah, but they still won. I'm, uh, yep. That's not Utopia. Sorry, that's Oops. So, yeah, right. Insane is from Oops. Honey's from Oops. Utopia is Wicked, but Bunny is from Things Utopia. are confusing. It's so like that was some, 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 uh, some, um, some logo confusion there. But, mm. yeah, Insane from, from, uh, from Oops. Unusually yep. having such a poor round. He's one of the shot callers for Oops, but normally... He does perform well, well in these matches. Yeah, normally he's playing artillery in kind of a little bit more pivotal roles. So maybe he's taking a step back from that. Not too sure. HDG, HDG really did play well, so there's no taking away from that, but still. He did, uh, I mean, he did 2.8k damage in that uh, last battle. So yeah. once again, mm. doesn't matter. You know, he just hits he's the shells. He's playing really well. Yeah. Like, he, he's probably been the surpri most surprising player, I guess, to my eyes thus far, um, who's kind of made a debut into this. But still, it's not just about us, it's about you guys at home and how you thought that match would go now. It was Oops leading. They they had a small percentage of the uh, small, vote, but, but yes. still, there's, there's a bit of a surprise here. Finally, the audience is wrong. Well, Utopia won. Yeah, exactly. You're absolutely right. Uh -huh. People, come on, what are you doing? Uh -huh. No, uh, even all these calculations got me a bit off, uh, <laughs> of, my, of my trail. Yes. 5-4, some of you predicted that, congratulations, but the majority of uh, our community were voting for oops. And the next vote is already up and running since the fifth round of the former match. And it will be, of course, Wombats versus Rusty Rosta. And currently Wombats on tanks are leading with a 91% uh, yeah, point Ouch. advantage. Ouch. That hurts it's quite a lot. W well, ha happened uh, didn't happen for a long time, to be honest. Mm. And we see a 90% advantage. But people, well, the vote is still open and will run throughout the first two maps of the next match. So enough time to get involved. Head over to our Facebook page, facebook.com slash WGLEU, to send off your votes. And if you do so, and if you're one of the three fastest correct predictions, you might win a bonus code containing a little premium tank, a little gold and a garage slot and a few premium days. So I say little, but actually it's pretty cool. So you should check yourself, head over to our Facebook page as said, and also follow us on Twitter at WGLU. We will provide you with live updates during the matches. So if you have to leave at some point, don't be sad. You will still know what's going on on the servers. Well, it's all been laid down. Melly has laid the law. Do exactly as she says. Otherwise she'll just globally ban all of you in Twitch chat. She threatens it all the time. I try and keep you guys safe, but I can't control her for long. So guys, do enjoy your freedom while it lasts before she completely locks you guys out and we have to maybe take the keyboard away from her. Who knows what's going to happen? But guys, we still have two more games coming up tonight and the good action is certainly not over. This was a little closer than I expected, to be completely honest. Yep. I'm, I'm hoping the next couple of games are going to be to the same caliber, but we're going to find out. So guys, do stay tuned. We're back after the break. We'll be kicking off with RR up against Wombats on Tanks. <laughs> 